Hello, everyone, and welcome. Well, it is September, and as we all know, this is the beginning of the Christmas season in the Philippines. I am very sure that by this time, all your social media timelines are now filled with posts and shares about Christmas. In Naga City, September is very meaningful for us, as this is the month that we celebrate the Peña Francia Festival. In fact, today is the Traslacion, and so I would like to greet everyone, happy Peña Francia Fiesta. But for now, I would like to welcome you for today's timely and relevant webinar, Shields Up, Integrating Digital Safety and Discernment. I am Daniel N. Filio, a fourth-year BS Psychology student of the Ateneo de Naga University, and I will be your host for today's webinar. So without further ado, and to formally open this online event, may I invite everyone to be in the proper disposition as I call on the university choir to lead us in the invocation. I beg to fall in love with thee, my Lord, with every breath of life I take. I beg to fall in love with thee, my Lord, it's every beat I to thee forsake. For short of knowing you, and even if my will runs terrified, your passion leaves the darkness of my soul, sheds it light, breathes its life, seals the murmur of the to the University Choir and to their program director, Sir Joseph Raboriano. Hello, Athenians, and hello to our participants coming from different schools. We hope that you continue to be safe and well. The Ateneo de Naga University Office of Student Affairs, or OSA, in cooperation with the Philippine Association of Practitioners of Student Affairs and Services, or PAPSAS Region 5, is proud to present to you this webinar. Shields up! Integrating Digital Safety and Discernment. This webinar is part of the Office of Student Affairs continuing program on student rights and responsibilities, which aims at helping the university maintain an environment that is conducive to learning 
by promoting student welfare and ethics, whether in traditional setting or in the virtual format that we have right now. This year also continues its advocacy of promoting responsible digital citizenship in response to the more pronounced and current trends and realities in the cyber world affecting the students today, most especially during this new normal. Through this webinar, we hope to deepen the students' knowledge on responsible digital citizenship, help them learn security features and tips in using social media and other information and communication technologies. We also want to guide them in creating positive digital footprints, and more importantly, after the activity, we hope that the students can become responsible and discerning digital citizens, such that they are critical and able to make informed actions or decisions on how to meaningfully utilize digital technologies. And of course, respect human rights and dignity through ethical use of these technologies. But of course, before we proceed, we kindly remind you to observe proper netiquette. Please use the comment section of the ADNU also Facebook for questions or comments relative to the webinar. Please do not use it for other topics or internal discussions. If there are questions, these will be entertained during the open forum. So let me now share with you the schedule of today's webinar. There will be two parts, and the first part is the talks of the three speakers, while the second part is the open forum. If you have any questions or comments to the presentation of the speakers, kindly post them on the comment section of the ADNU OSA Facebook. Please state your name, the school or organization you represent, and your brief question or comments. Later during the open forum, we will address them through the respective speakers and reactors. The e-certificates will be given to those who pre-registered and who will accomplish the evaluation form. So we will provide the link for the evaluation form at the end of this webinar. So welcome once again, and we hope that you will gain new and useful learning from this event. At this point, may I now call on the Director of Student Affairs and the President of the PAPSAS Region 5, Mr. Rodolfo S. B. Virtus Jr., to give the welcoming remarks. Hello, everyone. Maray na hapon sa gabos to the Ateneo de Naga University administrators, faculty, staff, and especially students, as well as the participants from other higher education institutions from Bicol region. Good afternoon. Kumusta po? I hope that you are all safe, not only from COVID-19, but also from the threats present in virtual spaces. The theme of today's webinar is a recurring one as it is very relevant in our daily online learning and work, as well as in our informal communication, entertainment, and even in our online shopping and e-commerce, among others. To provide more context on why we are doing this particular webinar, Allow me to share with you some findings from the 2021 State of Digital Report of We Are Social and Food Suite. 5.22 billion people around the world use a mobile phone today. 4.66 billion people consume the internet and 4.20 billion people are social media users. All these figures are higher than the 2020 statistics or even more than what is stated because some countries were unable to contribute their updates to the research because of the pandemic. Now, take note that Filipinos are still the world's biggest consumers of social media, spending an average of four hours and 15 minutes per day using social media platforms. And Filipinos, tayo po yun ha, we spend the greatest amount of time online at an average of almost 11 hours per day. Sa 11 hours na yun, kasali na doon ang social media browsing na four hours. Are you surprised? Well, ako hindi ano. In fact, this information is not surprising at all because the number of social media users in the Philippines, according to Statista.com, is 76 million 
in 2019. And 75 million Filipinos are on Facebook alone. The figure should be higher in 2021. The numbers grew in this pandemic because work from home arrangements and online classes have been carried out to observe minimum health standards. In the same State of Digital report, respondents said that they use the internet for the following top five reasons. Number one is finding information at 63%. Number two, of course, is staying in touch with friends and family at 56.3%. Number three is researching how to do things, whatever that means. Number four is entertainment, watching videos, TV, movies. And number five is finding ideas or inspiration at 51.7%. Number 10 lang po ang education and study-related activities at 42.6%. That is the worldwide result. Of course, there are nuances when it comes to the reasons of the Filipinos. I think it is also important to note that, according to Statista.com, social media applications, especially Facebook and YouTube, are the primary source of news and platform for product placement for the Filipinos. What does this mean? With all the fake news and opinions of influencers on Facebook and YouTube, Digital technology and social media are very susceptible to human misappropriation, like hacking, variety of scams, invasion of privacy, cyberbullying, and even sexual harassment. Further, false information, libel, and hate speech proliferate on social media, and you know that. This is the reason why the Ateneo de Naga University Office of Student Affairs has been proactively advocating for responsible digital citizenship since before the pandemic and especially during this health crisis when the learning environment that we use is mostly virtual. We believe that schools play a crucial role in teaching the youth on how to be ethical, critical, and productive users to counter the threats posed by social media and other digital technologies. The profile of the university graduate under the C Compassionate Commitment to Change says that the Athenian should participate actively in the life of society and the global community and grow in consciousness of one's dignity and personal purpose in engaging the world. This is one of the messages that we want to communicate with you in this forum. So I hope that you will listen and be able to reflect on the inputs of the speakers and our conversation on this important theme of the webinar. On behalf of OSA and PAPSA's Region 5 chapter, I would like to thank our speakers for today, Engineer Zero Magallon, Mr. Cornwell and Father Cel Reyes for saying yes to our invitation. And salamat po in advance for your sharing in this event. Special thanks go to Ms. Jude Verhel de Dios and all the facilitators and students of the College Ignatian Formation Program and National Service Training Program for your presence and participation. Finally, I thank the reactors the students and professionals from the Philippine Association of Practitioners of Student Affairs and Services, or PAPSAS, for your presence and valuable contributions to this webinar. I hope that this afternoon's forum shall not only be informative, but more in importantly, it will be formative. May this and other efforts of the university, especially OSA, help build a community of safe and discerning digital citizens. Diyos mabalus po sa sa Indogabos.
Thank you so much, Sir Sonny. So at this point, let me now introduce to you our first speaker. Our first speaker is a self-made young entrepreneur who works with local and interna international entrepreneurs to grow and scale their businesses through social media marketing. As the CEO and founder of Cornwall Media, an advertising agency, he serves and mentors with passion, guiding his clients to effectively strengthen their brands and make their ventures sustainable. Together with his creative team, they produce very clever and high engaging advertisements online. He is a certified Facebook marketing partner and an advertising trainer at FVA Business Consultancy. He manifested his marketing and business management skills through growing and at the same time initiating a mental health apparel brand named Bakas with a Facebook page that once reached 1 million people in just 30 days. He is a multi-awarded Eagle Scout and a member of the 10 Outstanding Boy Scouts of the Philippines Association, a graduate of International MCW, Young Leaders Access Program, a community youth leader, and also he is a change maker. Now at his graduating year for the BS Management Program at the University of the Philippines, Tacloban, this young CEO believes in the capacity of the youth to build their career as early as a teenager. He also believes that as the internet gives tons of opportunities, netizens should also be aware of how to engage positively, critically, and competently in the digital environment, as it may cause repercussions to other users too. He advocates for digital citizenship education because he thinks that everyone should benefit from the internet, not only businesses. And this is through effective networking and communication that respects human dignity and rights. So without further ado, to talk about digital citizenship and digital footprint, please welcome Mr. John Stephen Cornwell. Hi, I'm John, and I'm here today to talk about digital citizenship and managing your digital footprint as a student. Suppose your instructor told you that you need to report in class the concept of cryptocurrency. It's a curious topic, isn't it? So what you did is simply Google the word cryptocurrency and you found this first link to the site on the results page that contains a blog entitled Cryptocurrency Basics and How You Can Be a Millionaire in Just 5 Days. Without any doubt, you clicked it. It asked you to sign up first before you can access the content. So you signed up, not with your email, but you signed up using your Facebook account. You just felt it's convenient to do that all the time. After a few clicks, you read the blog, and after a few days, you noticed that you regularly received spammy emails about cryptocurrency. Not only that, you now see cryptocurrency-related ads on your Facebook and Instagram feeds, pushing you to download their app, buy their coins, and sign up for their free trial with free credits and free money. Is this scenario familiar to you? Well. I think so because for me, that's honestly what I usually experience. Sometimes not being conscious anymore of every click I make when I'm online. And it's a good thing that I was invited to speak before you today and talk about digital citizenship and digital footprint. Believe me, I need it as much as you do. So let's learn together. Now, just a disclaimer, as I have been introduced, as you have heard, I am a digital marketer, social media advertising specialist and an entrepreneur myself, who in one way or another benefit from the evils of digital marketing. Well, I just said evil because I am going to talk about digital citizenship, which is very ironic at some point. But you can trust me on this, as I am a firm believer that everyone deserves the benefits of this digital world and everyone deserves the right to privacy also. It's my advocacy to promote digital awareness by all means, not just on the business side, but also in its responsible use that supports everyone and respects the dignity of all. Let's start with the definition of digital citizenship. The best definition I found is from the Council of Europe's Competencies for Democratic Culture, which says, digital citizenship refers to the ability to engage positively, critically, and competently in the digital environment. Drawing on the skills of effective communication and creation to practice forms of social participation that are respectful of human rights and dignity 
through the responsible use of technology. That's a whole lot, right? Now, from this definition, we can break down the most important points you can simply remember. Engage, participate, respect. Everybody wants your click. That is why most social media sites are really made for engagements. Your friend posted a picture on his Instagram while eating breakfast. You liked it. Your favorite influencer posted a new dance challenge on TikTok. You liked it and even shared with some of your friends. All these engagement options like comment, share, save, tweet, retweet are all made for you to click and join the bunch of data they use for advertising and even sell to third-party entities. And you were not aware because you haven't read the terms and conditions when it flashed to you and you just clicked agree. Next is participate. Aside from just engaging with the contents of others, you also participate and post content for the consumption of others. I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying be aware that what you post there will stay forever. And I'm going to explain this more later. When you participate, you join in discussions or fora, put another layer in the comment section, and retweet with a message quoting another tweet. In simple terms, your participation means more clicks on your part, not just a simple like or share. It includes typing on that keyboard of yours, touchscreen or not. Next is respect, and this is where it gets serious. Because this is the part where most are unaware of. A part that is often taken for granted because of the argument, I can post what I want because it's my personal account. Not taking into consideration the ripple effect that one simple post or share can do to others, people or machine. It's either you offend another person, say your friend, or you just exposed out there data that can be used against you because it's there forever. Now, let's talk about this forever thing that I've been mentioning. Maybe you're asking, why does it stay forever even if I have deleted it already? Every email, post, photo, and click you make online leaves a trail. It's permanent. It follows you for life and it's not going anywhere. It's your digital footprint. You may be wondering, what is a digital footprint? And why should I care about it? Whether or not your information is shared intentionally, it's being gathered by advertisers, employers, and companies from which you shop. This information is called your digital footprint, and it's becoming more important than ever in today's digital economy. While there's no official definition of the term digital economy, it can be summed up as the entire ecosystem built from our online connectivity. In this newfound era, your digital footprint can no longer be ignored. Simply put, a digital footprint is a record or trail left by the things you do online. So your social media activity, the info on your personal website, your browsing history, your online subscriptions, any photo galleries and videos you've uploaded, essentially anything on the internet with your name on it. Digital natives like today's students like us rarely think twice about putting their names, our names on things online. So our footprints can be pretty wide. Your digital footprint is often used to obtain personal info about you, such as demographics, religion, political affiliations, or interests. Information could be gathered using cookies, which are small files websites store on your computer after your first visit to track user activity. Cookies also allow you to hold items in a shopping cart, store preferences, or login information and make personalized suggestions based on your location or interests. Your digital footprint is used by advertisers to target you with customized and personalized ads. For example, if you look at a pair of shoes online, you may later see ads of those shoes or similar items. Your digital footprint is also used by employers, both current and perspective. It is especially important to take care of your digital footprint if you're job hunting, as Googling is now a central part of the hiring process. A passive digital footprint is a data trail you unintentionally leave online. Websites that install cookies on your devices, 
apps and websites that use your geolocation and social media that uses your likes, shares, and comments to profile you are examples of passive digital footprint. To be a responsible netizen, you should have an active, positive digital footprint that protects your privacy. Now, I know there are some that say, I don't bother anymore about this out of convenience. I just want to use these sites. And that's totally fine. But at least be aware of where your information will be used. But again, the problem is there are times when you can never be aware. And that's where your digital citizenship education comes in. So how can you manage your digital footprint? Here are 10 tips and tools that you can do to make this happen. Number one is to Google yourself. Take inventory of what's out there. Search for your name every few months so you're cognizant of the information others have access to. Number two, protect your personal data. Don't disclose your personal address, phone number, passwords, or bank card numbers. Consider using a nickname instead of your real name. You can also use a password keeper. This is more of a security thing, but the worst kind of footprint is the one you didn't make that contains all of your sensitive information. It's too much work to remember 50 different passwords, right? And every site has its own unique rules. Until someone solves this problem, the best solution is likely a password keeper tool. Number three is to monitor linking accounts. When you link your Facebook or Twitter account to that new site, whatever site that might be, you may not realize or care at the moment what you're giving it access to. It's usually safest to use a secondary email address to sign up for new sites rather than granting this kind of access. Next is to consider using an anonymous secondary email. Whether you're communicating with someone new or signing up for a new social media platform, it can be useful to have a secondary email address. Number five is to at least skim the terms and conditions. Few people read every word of every terms and conditions page. And even if you did, you may not understand them all and how they can and might impact you. But do not even have the slightest idea what you're agreeing to when you do accept those terms and conditions only has the potential to harm any legacy of your use of a site, platform, or page. Number six is to think before you post. Never put a temporary emotion on the permanent internet. Anger is temporary. Online lasts forever. Pause before you post. Think twice, post once. Number seven is to control your photo uploads. Any photo you post could be dug up someday. Limit your sharing of questionable images or even videos. 15 minutes of humor is never worth a lifetime of potential humiliation. Number eight is to understand that searches are social. Google pulls the same trick with search and browsing habits. If a student is logged into their Google account, the service tracks every keyword they search, every web page they visit, and every time they visit YouTube. There are ways, however, to control the bits of deep data that we leave around. First of all, even though Google is practically an official synonym for web search, it isn't actually the only game in town. Less profit-motivated search engines like DuckDuckGo.com and Bing may take a little getting used to, but they can sometimes make clearer efforts to protect users' browsing privacy. If this is not possible for you, you can opt to go to the security and privacy settings of your Google account and look up there the assumptions that Google made for you. You'll be shocked. Number nine is to use digital tools to manage your digital footprint. A host of browser extension and app add-ons can also limit the capture of personal information. VPNs, VPN protocols, and other browser tools and website opt-outs, to name a few. There are also some extreme measures. Browsing from behind a virtual private network or VPN puts a layer of thick fog between online activity and real-world identity. If even that isn't enough for your suddenly privacy-hungry students, there's also the nuclear option. You may have heard of 
Tor, the multi-layered proxy client that's a go-to for anyone looking to access the fabled deep web. By routing your IP address through multiple proxies, Tor protects users from anyone, anywhere, ever knowing who they are and what they're looking at. Lastly, dare to say no to cookies. I know the accept button is highlighted when you're asked about this, but if you are not comfortable with that site keeping your activity log, then dare to decline. When done wrong, your digital footprint can be detrimental. But it's not all doom and gloom. When they're done right, a digital footprint can provide you with a great first impression. You're now aware that employers are following your trail, so take advantage of it. There are many ways you can leverage your digital skills to land a job. Now that you know what a digital footprint is, take the proper steps to cultivate it. The digital world isn't going anywhere anytime soon, so think of it as a lifelong development. Take advantage of the platform to present yourself in a good light and show off your best qualities. After all, you never know who will be looking in our newfound digital economy. It might be your employer after your graduate college. An essential part of your digital footprint are your social media accounts. This, for the most part, encompass your overall footprint as more than half of the total world population has one or more accounts. That's according to Hootsuite 2021 data. Social media can be a great way to stay in touch with classmates, teachers, friends, and family, and even to network professionally. Today, there are a wide variety of social media outlets available. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok are just a few of the options. While social media can be a useful tool, it is important to keep these seven pointers in mind to keep your social media use as safe and responsible as possible. Number one is to don't share the information that is not supposed to be shared. Yes, social media is a way for everybody to open up and connect with people. However, you must not share too much and confidential information online to keep yourself safe from any kind of identity theft or privacy infiltration. It is quite obvious that you should not or never share your home address or phone number, student number, or a picture of your school ID, PIN, bank accounts, as well as your card information. Number two is don't accept friend requests from everybody. If you are the one who is into increasing his or her friends, then you are most likely to become the victim of identity theft as you might accept a friend request of an identity thief who has created a fake profile for accessing your information. So, ditch the so-called popularity contests with your friends. The smaller your social media circle is, the better it is for you. Number three is to check your privacy settings. Assuming that the default privacy settings are enough for you is not at all recommended. Make sure that you go through the privacy section to check out what options are available for you and which ones are useful for you apart from the default ones selected by the social media site itself. For example, maybe you can post a certain photo that will be only available to your friends or maybe available only to you. Know which particular type of content you can share to your friends and which one can you share with yourself only. Number four is to always use caution while clicking on links. You might consider a link harmless, which a friend of yours has sent you. However, you should double check everything before going ahead with a link. Does your friend share these kind of links or not? It could be the situation that your friend's account is compromised and the link serves as a backdoor for the hacker to get access to your account. Number five is to avoid posting unprofessional photos or statements. Now, view your social media accounts through the lens of an employer and adjust the contents of your account accordingly. Some employers and schools search for the social media accounts of prospective employees and students during the application process. And you want to make sure you continue to make a good impression. Also, keep in mind that many schools and places of employment have policies regarding social media use. Make sure to familiarize yourself any social media policies and make sure your social media accounts are in accordance with the policies or you may face repercussion. 
Now, I know maybe some of you will say, hey, this is my social media account and I have the the full uh, right to to exercise whatever I want. Now, the thing is, you can choose to do whatever you want to a certain account maybe that will not involve or will not expose your personal identity because maybe in the future that will affect your employment, that will affect also your application to a certain school or a postgraduate school that you will be attending soon. Next is do not post your whereabouts. While it can be tempting to post vacation photos or photos while out and about on the town, doing so tells everyone with access to your social media accounts that your house is unoccupied and could invite a thief to come to your house during this time. While it might seem safe to share such information with your social media contacts, keep in mind that accounts may be hacked and your privacy settings may not be as secure as you would hope. Now, the last thing is to think twice before posting in an emotional state. Although it can feel therapeutic in the moment, making a social media post in anger can have repercussions long after the statement is made. Keep in mind that once something is posted, on the internet, it can never really be removed. When making an emotionally charged statement on social media, be mindful of the consequences before publishing the post. Keeping these guidelines in mind can help you keep your experience with social media positive. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned more about digital citizenship and digital footprint. Thank you so much, Mr. Cornwell, for that very insightful talk. As a student myself, I learned a lot from your talk and presentation. So if you have any questions or insights for Mr. Cornwell to the audience, you will have the chance to share them through the open forum later. Thank you so much. Our second speaker, ladies and gentlemen, advocates for cyber wellness. He is a teacher, engineer, and administrator at the Ateneo de Naga University. He graduated from the Ateneo de Naga University with a degree in BS or Bachelor's of Science in Computer Engineering in 2002. He is a professional computer engineer and a Cisco Certified Network Associate. He is also a lifetime member of the Institute of Computer Engineers of the Philippine, Philippines Incorporated. So currently, he is the director of the network operations and computer services in the same university where he also teaches at the undergraduate level, specifically in the College of Science and Engineering. So to talk about cyber wellness in using information and communication technologies, or ICT, I now give you Engineer Zero M. Magallon. Let's give him a big warm round of applause. Thank you very much, uh, Osa, for inviting me this afternoon to share with you basics on ICT, the examples, and how to safely and ethically use them. So for this afternoon, our topic will basically cover the definition, the different components of ICT, some common examples that are being used by the students, basically focusing on the infrastructure, hardware, and then software component. And then later on in the last part, we'll be presenting just general tips on how to safely and responsible or responsibly use ICT. So we'll talk a little bit of computer safety and then cyber wellness. So by definition, ICT is basically the diverse set of technological tools and resources used to transmit, store, create, share, and exchange information. So these are tech tools and resources that basically includes your computer, your internet, your live broadcasting technologies like radio, television, and webcasting, and also recorded broadcasting technologies like podcast, uh, audio, video players, storage devices, and then telephony. So if we talk about the different components of ICT as a system, it basically is composed of at least six components. You have their human resource, database and warehouse, uh, cloud computing, telecommunication, software, and hardware. So once we talk about hardware, that's basically is the physical technology that works with your information. 
So it can come as small as your smartphone that you now have up and as large as supercomputer. It also includes your peripheral devices like your keyboards, external disk drives, and routers. And with the rise of IoT nowadays, you'll also see uh, previously none network or not connected uh, network connected devices like your cars clothes to start uh, receiving and transmitting data now through the use of sensors and mini computers that are installed in them specifically once we discuss about wearables later on you'll see a lot of examples for this one you also have software so basically your hardware alone is not enough it needs uh, a software to tell it or to, to instruct it as to what to do, what are the steps to take. So there are two types of uh, software available. You have system software and application software. So the primary piece of system software that we should be familiar with would be the operating system or the OS. So it can come in different forms like your Windows, iOS, and then Linux. The different uh, flavors of Linux, like your Ubuntu, Fedora, Kali Linux, and others. So they basically manage your hardware operation. The second uh, example is your application software. This is designed uh, for specific tasks, like your office productivity tools. Your uh, an example would be creating documents, spreadsheets, designing web pages, or programming or designing uh, banners, etc. So those are application softwares. Third one would be your telecommunications. This is basically the one responsible for connecting your hardware to form a network. So once we say network, usually you'll have a wired and a wireless network. So once you say wired, you have ethernet cables, fiber optics, and for wireless, you have Wi-Fi or mobile connectivity, broadband, satellite communications, etc. So a network in terms of, uh, I mean, the smallest uh, interconnection of devices can be considered as a local air network. You know? So a specific uh, air like school, office, a laboratory. But when we talk about an interconnected network that spans geographical area we can now call that as wide air network uh, come to think of it once you say internet it is also the interconnections or a network of networks the interconnections of networks the fourth one is cloud computing so this one is generally used to describe your data centers that are available to the world or to the users over the internet so you predominantly have large clouds today you know, that we access for us to be able to uh, use their service for example your uh, office 365 wherein you have already email addresses uh, your outbox your google drive and other services uh, a good example of this also would be your Amazon AWS. This is one of those uh, enterprises that offers cloud services. So it, cloud services can come as an enterprise cloud or a private cloud, or it can be a public cloud. And then you can also have a hybrid cloud wherein it is a combination of both types of clouds they also offer different types of service like uh, software as a service infrastructure as a service platform as a service uh, i will not dig deeper on that since it would require uh, a lengthy discussion on the, the details the fifth one is database and data warehouses so database is a place where data is collected and from which it can be retrieved by querying uh, using one or more specific criteria you also have a data warehouse that contains all of the databases in whatever form that an organization needs. Specifically, with the given uh, boom in uh, IoT or Internet of Things, we now have the emergence of big data. So we hear people of uh, data mining in terms of 
uh, mining the tons of uh, unsorted data into intelligence. So that's basically the the target or the should I say the end goal of data mining. Then the sixth part, which is one of the important part, is the human element. It is us people that basically runs the system, follow the procedure, and basically uh, make use of this ICT. So we're a critical factor in the uh, ICT system. Now, let's talk about the common examples of ICT being used by students. So here with us is basically a, a quick guide that would tell us if we need, a, for example, a traditional PC system, a mini PC, an all-in-one PC, a two-in-one mobile device, a tablet, or a laptop. So you can see there are different features that are available. So for example, do you need portable device? So if it's yes, you'd be inclined to purchase more of mobile devices. If you say no, you'll go more on the side of desktop device options. So if you want touch capabilities, you're up for all-in-one devices or all-in-one PC. And then if you're into space-saving design, so you go for mini PC. But if it's not an issue for you, then you can proceed with your traditional desktop PC. Now for mobile option, if you're more of flexibility in terms of a device that can also act as a tablet, so you go with two-in-one devices. But if you're more of orthoportability or maximum portability with touch, you go with tablet. If not, you can proceed with laptops. So these are possible matrix you can consider in deciding which type of device you need. So for desktop device options, these are your traditional desktop devices. As you can see, you have your typical uh, keyboard, mouse, monitor, and then your system unit. For some, they keep on using the word CPU for this. It's actually the system unit where uh, basically the CPU is uh, installed. It's inside your system unit. Now, your typical desktop would have different types of system unit depending on your option you can have a tower you can have a desktop size you can have a small form factor or an ultra small form factor uh, uh, casing for your uh, traditional desktop now if it's too big for you you can opt for mini pcs on a good example of mini pc would be something like an just a, a bit larger usb flash drive this is called your Intel Compute Stick. Uh, all you need to do is to have a HDMI compatible plug in your TV or in your old computer. And this can already be uh, a full-fledged uh, computer unit. So you have there your HDMI interface. You have there your two USB for your mouse and keyboard. And then the micro USB port for the power supply. So all you need to do is plug it in, and then you can now have a fully functional computer unit. But take note of the limitation in terms of features, because definitely you cannot have or you cannot expect a, a full-fledged computer setup given this uh, small unit. You can also opt for this. Uh, this is called Intel Nook or the next unit of computing. This is basically containing all the features of your traditional computer unit, but in a smaller package. So you can only have this uh, a bit like a box of chocolates, but it has the necessary interfaces and capability of a full-blown computer unit. Okay, you also have other features or other uh, mini computers or mini PCs from other suppliers. Okay, now the next one is an all-in-one PC, meaning you can't see their system unit because it's uh, strategically installed at the back of your monitor. So all you have is your keyboard and mouse. It could either be wireless or wired, but basically in terms of the system, it's located at the back of your screen. Okay, so you have very limited 
uh, features here for upgrades. Now, for mobile device options, you have two-in-one laptops that are convertible. So as you can see here, it can act as an ordinary laptop or it can now function by just folding it properly. You can now have a, a, a tablet uh, conversion. You can also have a two-in-one laptop that are detachables. So by detaching it from the uh, main keyboard uh, part, you can have a tablet, then by returning it, you can have a full-fledged laptop setup. Other laptops are considered as your general purpose or productivity laptops, basically for encoding. And then you have those that are uh, thin and light uh, use for light productivity laptops. So we call that ultrabooks. And then you also have gaming laptops that are in tune for heavy uh, video graphics, physics simulations, uh, heavy memory requirement. So these are gaming laptops. And you also have workstations and creator laptops that are powerful and basically has uh, better stability and software compatibility, repairability, and security. For workstation also, these are... Uh, basically used by creative uh, users, especially those who design, for example, for Maya and other simulation uh, applications. So these are examples of your general purpose, your uh, ultra-portable uh, laptops, your gaming laptops, and then your creator or workstation laptops. You also have these things we call uh, tablets. These are just uh, typical types of your tablets. You have your Slate. This is uh, the traditional standalone tablet. Uh, for example, if you can, if you've seen Apple iPad and Samsung Galaxy Tab, these are examples of your Slate tablets. Okay. You also have convertibles, so you can basically attach full keyboard on it. And then it can act as if it's a laptop device. You can also have booklets. So these are uh, tablet computers that have two screens. So it's pretty much like opening and reading on a book. Okay. So you have a screen on each side. They aid in multitasking and may accommodate handwriting recognition features. You also have rugged tablets that are used for uh, demanding uh, environment, okay? So they are durable, they are shockproof, they can withstand research, military construction, and other outdoor uh, scenarios. So these are examples of those tablets. Okay? And then the most ubiqu ubiquitous uh, device in the market now would be your smartphone. So depending on your budget, you can opt for an Apple or a Samsung platform or an LG platform. And you have other platforms available like Huawei, Oppo, and other uh, platforms. Okay. Now, the, uh, one of the last of, in terms of hardware would be your wearables. Uh, it's a recent development that uh, we've incorporated uh, computing technologies in all of these devices, like your smart glasses, bracelets, smart finger, smart ring, belts, pants, socks, even shoes, and even your Bluetooth key tracker, okay? Smart shirt, smart watch. And all of this, basically, we've incorporated microsensors you know, and microcomputers so as to uh incorporate certain level of intelligence in these devices okay and we also have uh the component in terms of the internet okay so you have there the wired wireless and uh mobile or satellite internet okay so basically we see this as in the interconnection of different networks across the globe for a local network, an interconnection of different businesses. And for some, it's just our way for connecting with our online shopping, 
connecting to our banks, googling certain topics online, okay, sending email, doing web uh, conferences or uh, web chats. So this is the internet for them. In terms of access, however, you have uh, a certain list of ways of connecting or using the internet. So you can use the legacy dial-up system, okay? Basically using phone lines to connect to the internet. It's either you connect to the net or you connect to the phone. So you cannot do the, uh, do uh, both things at the same time. You also have the DSL. Uh, this basically, again, uses the phone lines, but but it's a bit much faster than the, your dial-up system. But this one allows you to use the phone and your internet at the same time. For very remote areas where it, your cabling, uh, your fiber optic cables, your mobile uh, or cellular network is not available, you can use satellite internet. Okay, so you use this for remote areas. And then for us in the city or in some rural areas, you can use cellular internet or the mobile internet, okay? So basically, you use the same channel as your phone to connect to the internet, okay? So this is the easiest way for connecting to the net using your uh, smart devices. In some areas, you can also use the same coaxial cable that delivers your cable television uh, to provide you with internet, the one we call cable internet connection. And for those who are fortunate among us, who has the necessary budget for connectivity, you can have fiber optic connections, okay? So the bandwidth would be dependent on the subscription that you have. I think the lowest here now in Naga City would be, I think, 25 Mbps for fiber optic, okay? And then the last one is software, okay? So software would have uh, different uh, examples like your operating system. So you have their Windows, Linux, Mac OS, okay? Android, and then for Office, you have their uh, PowerPoint, Windows, uh, sorry, Word, uh, Excel, and then Notepad. And then for the apps, you have their uh, Gmail, you have their Microsoft, uh, Mac McAfee Antivirus, Java, etc. So all of these are uh, relevant applications. Okay. Now, how about the tips for safety and ethical use of ICT? So we'll just pass through the different computer security uh, tips and then cyber wellness. I'll be picking up the slides uh, provided with uh, to me during my previous engagement with PLDT and the other one for cyber wellness would be from Father Cuyos, who was our uh, uh, invited guest for the HRMO uh, onboarding. Okay. So as you can see here in this uh, slide, you can see the inverse relationship on the sophistication of hacker tools versus the technical knowledge required. In the 1980s, you'd have a requirement of a very high technical knowledge just for you to be able to have an ordinary password guessing attack. No? Now, uh, at this age, you have very sophisticated attacks, but you only need very uh, small technical knowledge due, the, due to the proliferation of uh, tools, hacking tools, virus uh, creation tools, etc. So also you have there the shrinking of the time that we release exploits, meaning uh, threats. For example, in the first generation in 1980s, it takes weeks before new viruses are generated. Now, a matter of seconds, we hear of infrastructure hacking, warm attacks, distributed uh, denial of service attacks. Okay, so it's a matter of seconds. So you can see how we've grown in terms of the 
gravity of attacks or the release of exploits in our cyberspace now. Okay. Now, for those who say uh, Mac is uh, immune to attacks, now this flashback summary Mac is the proof uh, that basically tells us otherwise. No. So this was targeting Mac OS X uh, ten. Okay. So it basically converts your devices as zombies that uh, cyber criminals can use for attacking other servers or other end users. You also have here Android threats. So I, I took this from 2012 statistics by Kaspersky. You can see their various attacks or different types of malicious programs that are developed for the Android platform. Okay, so you can see their backdoors, SMS attacks, spyware, downloaders, etc. Okay, so these are botnets typically affecting your computer units or laptops in your network. Okay, so pay attention to your Windows updates, your Adobe Flash, Adobe Reader, Oracle Java, your web browser. Okay, to avoid uh being infected with a botnet okay so also regarding uh safekeeping of your money especially if those doing online banking okay so be careful in entering fake websites okay uh, using infected pcs that has malicious programs in it or uh it's infected already by certain uh, malwares these types of devices would basically compromise uh, your online banks. Okay. So always use trusted sites, devices that are in trusted environment, using trusted connection, and make sure you have protected keyboards input. Okay. This one is the chart of the worldwide hacking attacks. Among it, 15.8% uh, 15 of hacking attacks originate from inside China. Okay, and then about 13.3% of hacking attacks come from Russia. And the rest would be from the other parts of the world. So you have there, even US, you have 22.5% of all hacking attacks come from within the US of A. Okay. So about 15% of the world's internet traffic is an active cyber attack, okay? One of 20 computers are infected. That is more than 50 million worldwide. Come to think of it, we only have 40% of the world population having uh, internet access. So what are the 10 commandments in PC security? So remember to keep your antivirus software updated. So it's not enough that you have an anti, uh, antivirus software. Make sure that you are updated, okay? That uh, Especially for those that are signature-based, okay? Good for those that are cloud-based. They are automatically updated from their central dashboard, okay? Next one, be careful with your attachments, okay? So be wary in opening attachments. Verify if you're receiving an attachment from questionable sources. Okay. Be wary of using programs from uh, the net, especially those that are downloads, uh, resource sharing, pirated CDs, and the likes. They may contain malwares in the process. I like this clip. It says, uh, there's always a free cheese in a mouse trap. So be careful when you download programs or files from the internet. To avoid bogus file downloads, okay? So do not install software from the web unless you are sure what it is and that you trust the company you are getting it from. So not doing this, you might be installing viruses, Trojan horses, malware, and even ransomware in your computer unit. Okay? So you're having pop-ups. Is your PC slowing down? 
possibility of spyware okay being present in your system so use the necessary uh, antivirus anti-spyware systems in your company for the university we now are using malware bytes for our uh, end users okay So unsolicited uh, commercial email is more than just nuisance. It's also a major source of virus infection. So every time you receive uh, a spam or an unsolicited email, uh, the best thing to do is uh, not to respond or unsubscribe to the spam. Because once you unsubscribe to the spam, it's like saying that you're uh, actually an existing email account. So the more that they'll be sending you their uh, spams. This one is basically a phishing attack. Uh, this was uh, targeting employees of the university in our effort to test the responsiveness of our employees in responding to a possible phishing attack. Okay, As you can see here, the attacker... Uh, basically acted as if it's the official MIS that support email. But if you look closely, instead of an gbox.adnu.edu.ph, what you see is adnu-edu.ph, which is not the email of our MIS uh, office. So it's basically uh, requesting our specific uh, faculty here to change his email address, uh, sorry, change his password in his email. So it's basically asking him to proceed to another site that is not an official site of the university. As you can see here, services that add no dash edu dot ph. If if it was the legitimate site, it should be services that add no dot edu dot ph. Okay. So what will the attacker gain here? Basically, the employee's ID, the email address, and the password. Okay. So always update your operating system and program to ensure that you have the latest security patch for your system. So for older systems like Windows 7 and 8.1, you just need to open your Internet Explorer and tick tools and then Windows update. For newer ones, you can just click on your start button or in the window button and click setting and then click on updates and security or security and updates. And then it will basically update your Microsoft platform and Microsoft Office platform. Okay. So make sure to have rescue disk and keep it handy. Okay. So always create startup disk. Okay. To make sure that if ever your operating system gets uh, corrupted, you have a way of recovering your operating system. And then also backing up of files. Okay, It's not enough to only have one backup for your critical data. It would be best to have at least three different backups given three different platforms. Like if you have flash drive, external drive, email okay hard copy just so to be sure that you have the necessary backup for your important data okay so some of us receive these types of video email alerts okay so these are false clips or hooks or bogus emails so be careful in responding to these types of claims if you can check uh, AV vendor sites or hoaxbusters, just to be able to see if these uh, emails are uh, already familiar with them or if they have encountered this previously from other parts of the world. Okay, So this one is relative to firewall. So a system designed to prevent unauthorized access to and from private uh, network. So make sure that you install firewall in your system. 
in your computer unit. And if you're, let's say, a system administrator, make sure you have a necessary firewall for your infrastructure. So firewall can come in the form of hardware or software or a combination of both. Okay. Make backups, keep them holy. So a reiteration, make sure you have backup of data files at least weekly. Okay. If running a business, daily, if you, especially if you have financial transaction. Even if you fall victim to a virus or ransomware or a hacker attack, you'll escape with only minimum damage. At least you can have a day damage, okay, a day worth of uh, transaction. Okay. Lastly, we'll talk about cyber wellness. This is from uh, Father Stephen Cuyo's uh, presentation. Okay, so he said to have cyber wellness, we need to have SPA. So you need to have security, privacy, and accountability. So how do we keep ourselves secure? Basically, there's a need for us to protect our devices. So make sure you have the necessary lock for your devices, like a pin or password or gesture, or like a, a pattern or a face or a fingerprint. Okay, keep your malware protection up to date. Back up your data and update your operating system regularly. Okay. Also, make sure that you set strong passwords. Okay. Uh, you cannot just use admin admin. It's like having a cheese curl as your lock for your house. Okay. So, as, as one university plays it, treat your password like your underwear. Never share them with anyone. Keep them regularly. Change them regularly, rather. Keep them off your desk. Okay. So what constitutes a strong password? It should at least have uh, uh, 15 characters. It should be a combination of lowercase, uppercase letter, as well as numbers. And it should not be a dictionary word. For some, they would also advise adding a space, meaning creating a phrase, a phrase of a song, a phrase of a, a speech, or whatever. Uh, uh, links of words that you can easily remember. Okay. Also encrypt your data and connection. So you can check the net on how to encrypt your devices, encrypt your local or remote data, then encrypt your communication. So for encrypting your devices or local or remote data, you can look into uh, encryption of hard drives, flash drives, there are available platforms or apps in the net for that. For encryption of communication, you can research on HTTPS or VPN connections. Okay. So you can explore these websites to help you with this uh, concern. You can check on how secure is my password, password generator, key pass, descriptor, or even the built-in system in Windows, which is BitLocker, okay? So how do we protect our privacy? So limit the, per the amount of personal info you share, okay? Take note, at the front end of all of these social media, it's cute, it's all full of rainbows, but at the bottom of that, you can see the dark side of the net, okay? You don't know what, Monster lurks at the bottom of all of these cute things. Okay, so it's best to be on the defensive part. Okay, never ever share your email, username, and passwords, PIN or full credit card numbers, and other sensitive information. Okay, all your posts must represent you positively. Okay. So before you post anything, you ask yourself, would I want my family, friends, employers, and data miners to discover and save this information? Okay. If the answer is yes, then you're free to share that information. If not, do not even dare to click that send button. Okay. Third, be aware that nothing is truly private online. Okay. So check, is your browser even safe okay uh, do you even know that google takes note of all the 
search words that you've searched using their uh, platform or the YouTube video that you search or your GPS connections. Okay, you can try checking that in uh, HTTPS myaccount.google.com and then you can see the different platforms that are presently recording your tracks. Okay, so we might be a certain personality in our professional capacity and another personality in the off office uh, personality or social media personality. There's a way now of matching that specific personalities. Okay. So <laughs> this is one is a cute uh, clip or a picture. Okay. That basically speaks of Facebook and you. They're saying if you're not paying for it, you're not the customer. You're the product being sold. Okay. Something to think about. Anything you post can be seen and searched by anyone, copied, altered, and sent to others. And oftentimes, it's impossible to take down. Okay, we heard of certain scandals that are uploaded in the social media that's very hard to take down. Okay, even if you go to the NBI cyber uh, team unit or PNP cyber team unit, it's even impossible for them. To go through the process of takedown of this specific uh, uploads okay according to certain local court uh, decision equity serves the vigilant the court cannot afford protection to persons if they themselves did nothing to place the matter within the confines of their private zones so online social network users must be mindful enough to learn the use of privacy tools and to use them if they decide to keep the information private. So that's a September 29, 2014 decision of the court in Vivaris versus St. Therese College. So something to think about. Websites to explore in this uh, context would be PQ. HTTPS everywhere, and then to crip. So try to look into these different links. Okay. And how to, uh, do we become accountable online? So always apply the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay. Stop cyberbullying. Okay. Sometimes words can hurt more than we know. Okay. We don't know the processes, the mental processes or psychological processes that individuals undergo and how they handle those, okay? So we should be careful in our uh, dealings with them, whether in person or online, okay? You may know my name, not my story. So we don't know them or we don't know persons fully. So we need to be careful and gentle in dealing with people. Okay. So how do we deal with cyber bullies? We do not reply nor take revenge. We may unfriend them, block them, and report them as cyber bullies. We need to help spread positivity or positively online. Okay. And third, we need to maintain a certain balance. Okay. We cannot just be using the internet from day in and day out. No, There are psychological effects. There are physical effects or mental effects that are happening to us due to our exposure to ICT. The reduce of our blinking rates, the neurotoxin buildup, prostate and breast cancers, depression, okay, impairment of our memory, obesity risk, harder to learn. The reduction of our cognitive capacities. All of these are effects now of over usage of ICTs. Okay, so how, how do we respond to this? Limit the amount of time you spend on your gadget. Set aside a no tech day with your friends and family. Spend quality time with your family and friends offline. Okay, we don't want to have this type of interaction. Maybe something like this. What 
you do online can affect your whole world. Just mabalos. Uh, thank you very much for the invite, Osa. Hopefully, I give justice to your invitation. Thank you so much, Sir Zero, for that very informative talk on cyber wellness. So our final speaker is the current superior of the Jesuit community in Ateneo de Nagua University. So he graduated with a degree in business management from the Ateneo de Manila University in 1977, where he also obtained his master's degree in theology in 1997. He entered the Society of Jesus in 1979 and had his presbyteral ordination in 1990. He finished his licentiate in sacred theology at the Loyola Uni School of Theology, or LST, in 1998. And in 2004, he earned his doctorate degree in ministry at the University of Toronto in Canada. Some of his significant assignments are the following. First, he served as the director of the San Jose College Seminary in 1997. And he also became the rector of St. John Vianney. Theolo Theological Seminary, or SJVTS, in Cagayan de Oro City in 2010. Prior to this assignment, he served as Executive Director of the Center for Ignatian Spirituality in Quezon City in 2005. And in 2016, he was assigned at the Ateneo de Naga University and became the chaplain for the college and graduate school. During these times, he had various involvements in giving retreats and spiritual formation trainings. And currently, he is, the, uh, he is the assistant director for the pastoral programs, Office of Mission Identity and Identity, and a member of the board of trustees of the Ateneo de Naga University. To talk about digital discernment, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Father Celerino Ignacio M. Reyes of the Society of Jesus. Good afternoon. Uh, first, uh... I'd like to thank uh, the Office of Student Affairs to Mr. Sani Bertus for inviting me to give a talk uh, or on this webinar on discernment and engaging social media. For this afternoon, uh, I'd like to give you first, what am I going to talk about? Uh, there are four parts, okay? Uh, one or two of the parts are actually very brief. Uh, the first thing is my pers uh, own personal Catholic and Jesuit perspective and context of the talk. So although uh, I'm primarily speaking uh, uh, as a Jesuit, okay, and I'll explain that better later because it will affect uh, some of the things that I mentioned, many things about my talk. Second uh, part is the relevance of discernment in engaging social media. And there will be three uh, subparts to this, the pre-pandemic period, during the pandemic, and a realization that in both situations or in both cases, the spiritual for there are spiritual forces in the digital world that is affecting uh, our, our own engagement with social media and the digital media. And then third, principles in engaging the social media. And here I'll be using the Philippines province uh, Society of Jesus social media protocol, uh, because uh, I think that is important because Ateneo Dinaga is an apostolate of uh, the Philippine province of the Society of Jesus. And then uh, fourth and last part will be some practical guidelines which I will base mostly from a memo or a letter from Father Jose Villarin to the Atene de Manila uh, University, which was later incorporated in their social media guide, which was put up last year, around June 2020. So let me uh, begin first with the first thing. Uh, when I was asked to give this talk, I was a little bit hesitant because uh, although I have uh, my own uh, social media account and so on, I am not very familiar with it. Uh, but, uh, and, and one second, um, I'm a Catholic and a Jesuit a priest. And it is from that perspective and context that I will give this talk on discernment. 
Okay, uh, because that word has been thrown around both in uh, Christian and and secular setting, and it's good to have an understanding of what it it is from a point of view, from a Catholic point of view, and a Jesuit point of view. Okay, uh, the thing is that I have a limitation of time to talk about it. Okay, and therefore uh, it's important that uh, there be points that I'll just be talking of general things, and there will be points that I'll be talking of very concrete uh, guidelines. Uh, because of the limitation of time, I, I couldn't deal much uh, regarding discernment. Then, uh, just to remind everyone that I'm again, I'm I'm a Jesuit, I'm and I'm talking I'm talking as um, okay part of the institution of Atene Dinaga, which is a, a, a Philipp, Jesuit ministry, apostolate of the Philippine province. And it is there but that I'm coming uh, from. The reason I keep emphasizing this is I know that there will be other guests uh, in this webinar or other participants, and they might not see the, who are not necessarily belonging to a Jesuit school. And therefore, uh, need not uh, appropriate all of what the things that I need to say. Then just to indicate that most, practically all of my sources are coming from God, Catholic and Jesuit sources. But whatever you are able to learn or what able to know and understand from this, I would like you to follow the principle of tantum quantum. That is whatever helps you in your own engagement with the social media, use it in so far as it will help you. But always remember that you are governed by, by your own personal beliefs, whether they are religious beliefs or secular beliefs, okay? Uh, and uh, this is merely, this is a guide uh, mainly for those who are uh, in, in a Catholic institution or setting. Okay, first let's start with some description and I base this from uh, the Philippine Problem Social Media Guide. When we talk of social media, we're talking of uh, any media that is encoded in a machine readable format and can be created, viewed, distributed, modified and preserved on digital elect electronic devices like a desktop, a laptop, computers, tablet computers, mobile phones, and so on. So uh, any media that is encoded in a machine-readable format, okay. created, viewed, distributed, modified, and preserved on those digital electronic devices. When we talk of digital communication, uh, we talk the electronic transmission of information that has been encoded digitally as for storage and processing by computers. So all information that has been encoded digitally in a computer uh, or electronic device. When we talk of social media, uh, we talk of various forms of communication of electronic communication such as social networking and microblogging to which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content, which include but are not limited to Facebook, okay? Twitter, Instagram, Google, okay? YouTube, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Find Interest, Flickr, Reddit, Vine, Snapchat. Snapchat and SoundCloud. Okay, knowing all of that, uh, what is the relevance of discernment in engaging social media? Now, I like to focus on three points because uh, what I'm going to say is not only relevant during the pre-pandemic period. I think it is. It has become more relevant during the pandemic because we use the digital media and social media more so now than before. And that emphasize 
that there are spiritual forces in the digital world. Okay? Uh, it is not only propelled by business or economic and political forces, but there are spiritual forces in the digital world, okay, in which we are operating, in which we are engaged practically during this time, practically half of our waking day or even more. Okay, so let's begin with the pre-pandemic period. And uh, this is a, a, a digital statistics that I was able to gather uh, and um, mainly from We Are Social a consultancy firm. Uh, this was taken in 2018, uh, the beginning of 2018. The total population of the Philippines then is about 105 million. I think now it's about 108 more. Okay. Uh, and that um, the internet users at that point is 67 million. Okay. And that's 63% of the population at that time. And I think there, that will increase more now with the online education and uh, work from home. And then almost the same number are engaged in social media. So the one who use the internet are engaged in social media, almost the same number. And uh, practically almost also less than uh, uh, almost ev every one of those have, uh, have a social, have a mobile phone of 61 million or 58% of the population. Uh, and those who are uh, active mobile so, uh, social users are uh, about 62 million also. So these are the data before the pandemic. And furthermore, it says there in that uh, consultancy uh, firm, we are social. The Philippines again top the world in terms of social media usage as the number of internet users in the country hit 67 million, according to a new report by London, United Kingdom-based consultant firm, We Are Social. Okay. In its digital 2018 report, which compiled data from various third-party sources, We Are Social said Filipinos spend an average of three hours and 57 minutes a day on social media sites, mainly on Facebook. Okay. It said that the 16 million, there are 67 million accounts on Facebook in the Philippines, matching the total number of internet users. Another 10 million Filipinos are on Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. The Philippines was ahead in terms of social media usage in at least 40 countries. Least interested in social media were the Japanese who spent an average of 48 minutes a day updating their Facebook status and posting pictures on the Instagram. Overall, the Filipinos spent nine hours and 29 minutes a day on the internet based on the 2018 report. And this was second highest in the world after Thailand at nine hours and 38 minutes. Apart from social media, Filipinos use the internet to watch videos on YouTube and access the new sites. Okay, around May 2019, uh, the Filipinos have overtaken Thailand as the number one user of the internet, according to an ABS-CBN survey. That's just uh, less than a year after the pandemic has reached us. Between 2016 and 2019, uh, McCann Erickson made a survey on the youth. And one of the things that they found out is that the internet is making them anxious about their health, which is actually high compared to the global statistics. That means one every two young users of the internet has some problem as having anxiety about their health. And a lot of them, it has something to do with mental health and also in a sense, physical health. Okay, uh, you are healthy if you eat healthy food. So what you are, what you eat. Okay, 
Imagine if you spend nine hours in the internet. Okay? You, you become, in a sense, you absorb all of that. Not only your mind, but your heart. Okay? And your interior world is affected by it. If you keep on doing that every single day. Okay? You are what you eat. So if you absorb a lot of the fake news or uh, isolation or, or even the vanity, okay, uh, then okay, somehow it becomes part of you. And later on, we begin to realize that somehow it created a monster within. That makes us anxious. Okay, the other thing that is creating some sort of anxiety is that uh, a lot of young people are, are bored if they can only do one thing at a time. Okay, imagine if you are doing three or four things at a time it somehow disperses your energy. And of course, it will create a lot of anxiety because you cannot focus. Okay? We call this multitasking. Okay? But it also has an impact on our health. Some, uh, as Pope Francis would say later, and I'll explain this later, that it's a culture of sapping. We're very engaged with two virtual scenarios, engaged in two or different websites at the same time. I'm on Facebook, at the same time I'm studying, at the same time I'm texting someone, a friend. Okay, It somehow disperses your, your energy. Okay, And of course, that will create more anxiety. Okay. Uh, at the end of that Makan Erickson survey, it, it gives some uh, suggestions or recommendations. It says, uh, and he says there are three implications about this too, this spirituality or the lifestyle of the young. You see, when we talk of spirituality, we talk about way of life. So a lifestyle. Okay. Uh, and it, they said there is a greater need for discernment because it's just that they are given all these options. What would really be good for them? What options do they choose? Okay, even the multitasking. What do I need to pay attention now? Okay, and the rest can be just be a distraction at the moment. But also the value of wisdom. I think the young people are asking for that. And understanding, not judgment. You see, uh, St. Saint, uh, Saint Ignatius says in his book, The Spiritual Exercises, one of the powers of the spirit or the soul is understanding. Make meaning of what I'm doing. So when a person is bored, in doing a task, it says it, it has, doesn't have any meaning for me, so I'll move to another task. But this is, this is required, I'll do it. But it has no meaning for me. Okay? That is what it means when, when we feel bored. We, this, this task is not meaningful for me. It doesn't engage me, my interests or my desires. Okay. Uh, Around 2010, uh, Father Nicolas gave a talk to, uh, on higher education in Mexico. And he says, he says, to illustrate the benefit as well as the danger of technology in education, Father Nicolas shared an anecdote from the mid-1990s when he was serving as provincial in Japan. A couple of Jesuit professors from Sophia University told me, the internet is wonderful. You get so much information so quickly and so easily. And at the same time, each said, 
But I have to confess that now I need less and I think less. And I spend less time discerning what to do. A professor says this, what can we say of the students? Okay, I wish to signal here is my concern that our new technologies together with the underlying values such as moral relativism, okay? I decide what's right and what's wrong. Consumerism are shaping the interior worlds of so many, especially the young people we are educating, limiting the fullness of their flourishing as human persons and limiting their responses to the world in need of healing, intellectually, morally, and spiritually. Now, okay, that was the pre-pandemic thing. Now, you add now, during the, this, this pandemic time, during this pandemic time, online education where young people, okay, are, are more involved, okay, more than six, nine hours a day just on their classes and doing research. Okay, uh, so more than uh, more than uh, what they used to do, maybe they have to lessen it because they have to spend four or six hours on the internet on online education every day. Okay, and this creates more anxiety for a lot of young people. Okay, but that's not only for the young; it's also true for a lot of people working from home. Okay. Now, more or less, some people were able to create a boundary between their home and their place of work. Now, for a, a significant number, a lot of people are working from home because of this pandemic. Okay, and that gives them a lot of time that they spend in the internet, working from home. Okay. So in this period, we spend more time in the internet, perhaps even before the pre-pandemic times. Okay, but it gives us also some blessings. Uh, Bishop Pablo David uh, was the keynote uh, commencement exercise speaker last June. And he says, one of the big blessings that has been saved, that has, has helped us and saved many of us from going insane during this pandemic is digital technology and the internet. Millions of people have drawn a lot of spiritual and psychological support through online communications and live streaming on various digital platforms, which used to be instrumentalized mainly for pornography, for consumerism, for political manipulation by troll companies, online gambling, and other addictive habits. Suddenly, became a lifeline for communal worship. Okay, so live streaming of masses. Okay, even uh, prayer sessions on, online, family interactions, okay, online learning, working from home for all forms of human bonding and a rich source of intellectual, psychological, and spiritual resources. But I don't think it has stopped the trolls. In fact, uh, they're more active. It doesn't mean that we can, in fact, now we have the more uh, consumerism has employed because we need to do online shopping. So, but at the same time, we see the value of the internet aside from the things that we used to do previously. And it took a pandemic for us, according to the Bishop David, to use this new technology for what it really is worth, a useful tool for social communication. And now, as he said, even being there in Naga physically, not being there in Naga physically, I'm able to address you. We're able to hold this commencement exercise. So even graduation and commencement exercises are done, okay, through online. Okay. But it gives us also a warning. And, and this was done, uh, he said it last June. He says, let me end by reminding your dear fellow educators that education must form, 
Not just the mind, but the heart and soul as well. And he quotes a uh, Holocaust survivor, Dr. Haim Gina, to a group of, who spoke to a group of teachers. Your efforts must never produce learned monsters or skilled psychopaths. Okay. Okay. He talks about the spirit. What does it mean? Okay. When we talk of soul in, in a Catholic Christian understanding, it signifies the whole person. Okay. We are an embodied spirit. And that includes thoughts, feelings, and movements of the will. Okay. Ang sabi nga ng isang uh, Tagalog na uh, uh, isang Pilipino, yung tulak at kabig sa kaloob-looban. Okay, that when you engage social media, you, you, you engage the whole person. It's not only your thoughts, you're not only feelings, but even the movements that is happening inside. That interior world, okay, that uh, Father Nicholas, the late Father Nicholas has spoken about. And any activity we do, whether we're studying, playing, engaging the social media, daydreaming, our spirit, our spirit, the human spirit, is actively involved. In fact, what gives energy to all of these activities is the human spirit. Okay? But, okay, that's one aspect. Now, when we talk of the social, digital world, the social media, the digital uh the world that we are talking about. I, I think it's very important to take note what Pope Francis has tell us. That whether you're engaged in social media, any form of communication and relationship with others, there is something that is happening within all of us. And he talks of the Christian life is a constant battle. We need strength and courage to withstand the temptations of the devil and to proclaim the gospel. And this battle is sweet for it allows us to rejoice each time the Lord triumphs in our battle. Okay, in fact, he uh, quotes um, from Ephesians, the St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It says, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Okay, there are spiritual forces, a okay? good coming from God, coming from the Holy Spirit, and evil forces, okay, beyond what we see on the digital images and messages in the internet. In the social media. Okay? And you have to take on the whole armor of God to protect us. Okay? That's why we need vaccination. That's why we need the mask. That's why we need uh, uh, face, the face shield and so on. And to follow social distancing is to protect us from this virus. But, but what will help us to protect us from the spiritual forces? Okay, that affects our own decisions and actions in the digital world. Okay, and he emphasized we are not dealing merely with the battle against the world and the worldly mentality or philosophy that would deceive us and leave us dull and mediocre, lacking in enthusiasm and joy. Nor can this battle be reduced to the struggle against our human weaknesses and proclivities, like sometimes we feel lazy, okay, sometimes we we are envious, we are jealous, okay? And we have this lust, okay? It is also a constant battle against the devil who use all of these emotions, okay? To bring us away from God and others. Our Lord himself celebrates our victories. We will not admit the existence of the devil or the evil spirit if we insist on regarding life by empirical standards, okay? What is real is what I see, okay? 
reality those also is on the invisible plane. Okay? Without a supernatural understanding, it is precisely the conviction that this malign power is present in our midst that enables us to understand how evil can at times have so much destructive force. Indeed, in leaving the Our Father, the prayer the Our Father, Jesus wanted us to conclude by asking the Father always to deliver us from evil. Rather, perhaps a more exact word is to deliver us from the evil one. It indicates a personal being who assails us. Jesus taught us to ask daily for deliverance from him, lest his power prevail on us. The devil does not need to possess us, what you see in exorcism, movies, and so on. All he needs to do okay, is to poison us with the venom of hatred. Okay, and that is prevalence. Okay, uh, in the internet, in the social media, desolation, experience of depression, anger, confusion, and anxiety, and then envy. The focus is on me. When we let down our guard, he takes advantage of it and destroys our lives, our families, and our communities. Okay? Uh, like a roaring lion, he prowls around looking for someone to devour. Okay? And God's word invites us clearly to go against the wells of the devil. Okay? And to quench all the flaming darts. These expressions are not something melodramatic precisely because our path towards holiness is a constant battle. Those who do not realize this will be prey to failure and mediocrity. For this spiritual combat, we can be a powerful weapons of painful prayer, meditation of the Word of God, the celebration of the Mass, the Eucharistic adoration, sacramental reconciliation, the works of charity, community life, and missionary outreach. In fact, uh, Pope Francis has mentioned uh, in his early part during this pandemic last year that our powerful weapons against this pandemic is prayer and quiet service. If we become careless and false promises of the evil will easily seduce us. What good is it when Lucifer promises you freedom and showers you with all his benefits if those benefits are false, deceptive, and poisonous? How can we know if something comes from the Holy Spirit or if it stems from the spirit of the world or the spirit of the devil? The only way is through discernment. Okay? How, how we, do we make options of the several options presented to us? And how do we know this is coming from really good for us and coming from God? Okay? It's by discernment. which calls for something more than intelligence or common sense. And the gift of discernment has become all the more necessary today since contemporary life offers immense possibilities for action and destruction. And the world presents all of them as valid and good. Okay? Possibilities for action and destruction. All of us, but especially the young, are immersed in a culture of sapping. What does that mean? We can navigate simultaneously on two or more screens and interact at the same time with two or three virtual scenarios. Without the wisdom of discernment, we can easily become prey to every passing trend. Okay, okay. so if you just look at how many got these many hits in the internet and I'll follow that trend. Okay, uh, what exactly is discernment? Uh, the, I find this very helpful. Uh, Rita, this is by uh, Father David Lonsdale. He says, discernment of spirits in everyday life involves a process of sifting our daily experiences by noting and reflecting regularly on our affective responses to God and to life and its events. That includes our engagement with the social media, with the digital media, which preoccupies us most of our day. It means noting, for example, situation events in which we experience joy or sorrow, 
peace or turmoil, attractions or revulsions, an opening out to others or a narrowing in on ourselves, and a sense of God's presence or absence, creativity or destructiveness. Okay. The purpose of observing and reflecting on these patterns of responses is that they deepen our sense of ourselves. That they can show us where for each of us our Christian path lies, where the Spirit of God is leading us. Okay? So it tells us how are we affected by what we see in the internet? Okay, and to recognize, is this really coming from God? Or is this coming from the evil one? Is this going to help me move forward to be a good person or not? Okay, Pope Francis again, he says, this is all more important when some novelty presents itself in our lives, something new, okay? a current trend. Then we have to decide whether it is new wine brought by God, or an illusion created by the spirit of this world or the spirit of the devil. At other times, the opposite can happen. When the forces of evil induce us not to change and to leave things as they are, to offer a rigid resistance to change. Okay? In this regard, I think St. Ignatius made a good statement. Okay? In his uh, book, In the Spiritual Exercises, he says, the evil spirit will masquerade as an angel of light. Okay? The mask okay, is not only now to cover our nose and our mouth to protect us from this virus, but the mask that the evil spirit is to create a facade that this is good for you. And then later on, you realize it's not. Okay. What are some of these? That if I'm rich, I'll be happy. That if I'm rich, I'll be famous. And that if I'm powerful, I'll, uh, I'll be happy. If I'm, if I'm famous, I'll be happy. No. Okay. All of those are means. They are not ends. Okay. Yep, that would be to block the working of the Spirit. We are free with freedom of Christ till He asks us to examine what is within us, our desires, our anxieties, our fears and questions, and what takes place all around us, the signs of the times that is happening around us. And that's to recognize the paths that lead to complete freedom. Test everything, hold fast to what is good. But discernment is, as, as Pope Francis says, is not only present during extraordinary times. When we need to resolve grave problems and make crucial decisions, it is a means of spiritual combat for helping us to follow the Lord more faithfully. We need also at times to help to recognize God's timetable, lest we fail to heed the promptings of His grace and disregard His invitation to grow. To grow as a human person. To grow in our spiritual life. Open discernment is exercised in a small and apparently irrelevant thing since greatness of spirit is manifested in simple everyday realities. And that includes our engagement with social media. It looks irrelevant and yet those engagements affect us and affect all our relationships. It involves striving and travel for all that is great better and more beautiful, while at the same time being concerned for the little things for each day's responsibilities and commitments. For this reason, I ask all Christians not to meet in dialogue with the Lord, a sincere daily examination of conscience. Discernment also enables us to recognize the concrete means that the Lord provides in his mysterious and loving plan to make us move beyond mere good intentions. Okay? We should always remember that discernment is a grace, even though it includes reason and prudence. It goes beyond them, for it seeks a glimpse of that unique 
and mysterious plan that God has for each of us, which takes shape with so many varied situations and limitations. It involves more than my temporal well-being, my satisfaction at having accomplished something useful, finish my studies, I finish my work, or even my desire for peace of mind. It has to do with the meaning of my life before the Father. That in all our activities, God is present. And as Ignatius would say, God works for me, okay, to every creature in the face of the earth. Okay? It has to do with my meaning of my life before the Father who knows and loves me with the real purpose of my life, which nobody knows better than he. Ultimately, discernment leads to the wellspring of undying life, to know the Father, the only true God, and the one he has sent, Jesus Christ. We must remember that prayerful discernment must be born of a readiness to listen to the Lord and to others and to reality itself, which always challenges us in new ways. Only we, if we are prepared to listen, we have the freedom to set aside our own partial or insufficient ideas, our usual habits and ways of seeing things. In this way, we become truly open to accepting a call that can shatter our security, but lead us to a better life. It is not enough that everything be calm and peaceful. God may be offering us something more, but in our comfortable and inadvertence, we do not recognize it. Okay, there's one more, I know why this is important on a daily basis. The discernment of spirits liberates us from rigidity. It has no place before the perennial today, the reason why. The spirit alone can penetrate what is obscure and hidden in every situation, whether it's engagement with the social media, whether it's our relationship with our families, whether it's something to do with our work, and grasp every nuance so that the new wellness of the gospel can emerge in another life. Okay, in the Gospel of John, he says the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. The Lord calls us by name. He calls us because he loves us. But the Gospel then tells us there are other voices not to be followed. Those of strangers, of thieves, brigands, and those who mean so hard to the sheep. When these different voices resonate with us, there is the voice of God who speaks kindly to the conscience, and there's a tempting voice that leads to evil. How can we recognize the voice of the good shepherd rather than that of the thief? How can we distinguish the inspiration of God from the suggestion of the evil one? And it is in the process of discernment. Okay? As we encounter or engage the social media, okay, there are many voices, okay? that is telling us what to do. Now, how can we sort of make this concrete in our engaging the social media? The Philippine province of the Society of Jesus made a social media protocol. And this is meant to be also followed by the different apostolates of the Society of Jesus. But for me, it can be applied also for every Christian or for those who wish to engage social media. Okay, uh, it follows uh, the acronym THINK. Okay, so social media guidelines, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Okay, so since this is meant to be for the Jesuits, it can also apply to every Christian or for every student who wants to use this as helpful for him. Is it true? The Jesuit is on the side of truth. As our Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All his messages are true to the best of his knowledge. Okay, sometimes, because of sometimes we're in a hurry, okay, we post something that is not true. Okay, but at least admit, in humility that somehow I posted this is not pala true, this is fake news. Okay? So, but that is your guiding line. Unless you want to be the one to propagate lies, okay? So be careful of what you post. If, if it's an opinion, then, okay, say so that this is an opinion based on my judgment. 
it is helpful. The Jesuit task is to build up other people in the body of Christ. That is also the role of every Christian. Okay, every message, everything that you communicate there or respond to can build or harm. Okay, will this message help others? Third, human, is it inspiring? Human communication is not merely cerebral. All human messages, messages have an affective component to them. A Jesuit is aware of the affective component of his messages and its effects on the receiver. Okay? Uh, that's why, if you notice, uh, in uh, social uh, uh, inquirer website, on the popular website, how does this, uh, how, how do you feel about this, this particular use? Okay, angry, joy, and so on. It has an impact on us. But also, what we communicate to others has an impact. Okay, it affects us. And it, what affects us affects also our responses. Is it necessary? Some messages are better left unsaid or unsent. The Jesuit is aware that the social media makes communication so convenient, okay, in the whole world was access to the internet, that a knee-jerk reaction is fostered often giving rise to communication that is neither helpful nor harmful, but merely fills cyberspace. Okay, uh, so is it necessary to send this? Then the, the third part of that acronym is kind. Since charity is the norm of every Christian behavior, okay, the Jesuit's message are always kind or at least do not have potential to harm. Use it to inform your audience about the work you're doing. It could be about your latest events, that's fine. A new research finding or a profile about one of your staff members. But in between, break the monotony with a bit of trivia, a good photo, or an interesting quote. Make your post. Okay. To all of these things, true, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind, I like to use to capsulate, uh, to summarize all, it, all of them in what Matthew. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. Okay. With these gu guiding principles, I, I would like to suggest some pra more practical guidelines on the nitty gritty part of engaging social media. And I would like to uh, acknowledge that I got this from Father Jack Bellerin almost verbatim, okay? But this was also part of the Ateneo de Manila University Social Media Guide, which was uh, 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 published in June, 2020. Father Bellerin's uh, uh, memorandum or letter, okay, was, was done in December 2016 when he was president of Ateneo de Manila University. Okay, uh, he was, he is no longer president. But I think it's important because uh, I think it follows very how to respond to different things that, that you encounter in the social media. Okay, and like, like he said, uh, social media is a double-edged sword. Okay, it means it, it can policies, uh, facilitates communication. It can bring friendship among communicate with friends and then debate. It allows us to learn new things and exposes us to a diverse idea. At the other edge, social media can be deceptive, manipulative, inaccurate, or giving fake news, even thrill. So when we share something, okay, be careful about sharing articles from unverified W sources. 
Such sources and outright falsehoods do not advance any argument and are not in the public interest or even yours. Okay, in the post-truth alternative facts, this is very prevalent. Okay, post-truth uh, alternative facts era. Okay, share what is true as far as you can and make sure to verify your sources. And then here, okay, social media can be a place for gossip. Okay, hearsay, discussing rumors and windows damages not only the subject of the intrigue, but your own name, okay, and the institution that you represent as well. Okay. Remember, when you engage social media and you put yourself as a student, you represent the university or institution that you, that you are enrolled. Third, complexity. Don't fall for easy stereotypal answers. You know, life could be bigger than tweets and sound bites. Life is bigger than your likes and dislikes. And fourth, self-inflation or focusing so much a little bit on our ego. And so many times you might be sincere in what you're advocating, but be critical and honest with yourself. Examine your motives, what is within us, ask whether or not your post is carefully curated, construct of an idealized self image. And then trolls, and this is going to be more prevalent, especially now we're going to enter the election season starting next month. Trolls, don't feed them. You'll find people online and off who are only interested in shouting and burning instead of dialoguing and building. When faced with this type, say you peace and end it there. Our use of the internet should remind us that we're all situated in a web that strands link to us, link us to family, friends, Colleagues, students, acquaintances, strangers. Our online actions can strengthen the links of the web of relationship or severe them irreparably. Lastly, social media equates popularity with goodness or quality. Okay, the more likes there is, okay, the better. And that's not always true. What is con Controversial garners shares, likes, tweets, and infamy. What is loud and popular does not necessarily lead to wisdom or the greater good. The Book of Kings has Elijah looking for God in noisy and awesome events, a mighty wind, an earthquake, great fire. But the Lord was in none of these. Instead, after all the drama from the silence of a cave, there was only a whisper, a still, small voice. And his final words, before joining the company of online space, we do well to listen first to that still small voice. Okay, let me end. Uh, uh, with this quotation from John Paul II, a story of Bobis, which was also uh, cited in the updated Philippine program. Of priestly formation. He says, when we engage in social, well, this is me, when we engage in social media, we should exercise responsible freedom. And when we talk about responsible freedom, okay, uh, I think it's properly understood. It consists of freedom from the different form of selfishness and individualism but rather to be ready to open out to others, generous in dedication and services to one's neighbor. Okay, when we engage the social media, let us exercise responsible freedom. Okay, but the focus is not so much myself, 
but also to be ready to open out to others, generous in dedication and services to one's neighbor, to help others. Okay, now I mentioned earlier that during this pandemic era, okay, we, we are really more uh, engaging the digital media more and more of our waking life. Okay, before, before the internet, you could receive maybe one or two pieces of bad news per day. But now you get to hear everyone's bad news from all over the world, 24 seven. And it came in a, by, by legions, no? by as many. And sometimes those things, especially the bad news are not mentally healthy. So maybe at a certain time during the day, okay, it's important to take some time to shut off the phone, to close your laptop or your computer or your tablet, and just find somewhere nice to sit and relax. Okay. And just maybe spend some time of quiet silence looking at the day in the presence of God. Thank you, Paul, and just marvelous. Thank you so much, Father Cell. And I hope that given your inputs, our students and other participants will make conscious efforts to practice discernment in engaging in social media and other and using other information and commu communication technologies. So that's it, everyone. And that completes the first part of our webinar. So we hope that you learn from the presentations of our wonderful speakers. And please stay with us as we proceed to the open forum. Hello, everyone. Once again, I am Daniel Enfilio, and that completes the first part of our webinar. So we hope that you learn from the presentations of our wonderful speakers. And by the way, we would like to thank our viewers that peaked at more than 1,100 views. Thank you so much for watching. So please stay with us as, again, we proceed to the open forum. So I would like to call on Mamtin to facilitate and moderate the open forum. Hi, Mamtin. Hello, Danielle. Ayan, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Christine Arifrezo, a CIFT and NSTP formator, and I will be your moderator for the open forum. First, we would like to recognize the presence of our students from the CIFT and NSTP and all our viewers via Adni Osa Facebook Live. Also, we acknowledge the cooperation of national and regional officers of PAPSAS. Thanks to them, we are being viewed by students and student affairs practitioners from Bicol and other parts of the country. Since we were able to listen to our three speakers a while ago, we will proceed to one of the most exciting part of a webinar because personally, this is my favorite and this is the time for questions, clarifications, and even affirmations. So may I now call our speakers and Sir Sonny to join me in this open forum. And I will also be calling our reactors one by one to share their questions or insights relative to the webinar's theme and the speaker's presentation. And of course, our viewers are also highly encouraged to post your reactions and even your comments and questions in the comment section of our live. Rest assured that we will try to read all of them later on. Okay, so at this point, our first reactor is Miss Judith Beaverhel de Dios, or we call her Mam Jud. She is the program director of the College Ignatian Formation Program and National Service Training Program, or CIFT and NSTP. Good afternoon, Ma'am Jude. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah, thank you. Yes. yes. Um, my sharing would be more of um, how the technological development would be operational in our day-to-day -day life, especially in our engagement in the social media. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And of course, thank you to our three STEAM speakers. Ang yaman ng aking nakuhang no, ngayong hapon. And of course, um, thank you 
Team Osa, no? For inviting me to be one of the reactors. Maugma sa pagmati. Okay, to be part of this endeavor. Um, I am happy uh, for this chance to be able to share my thoughts and uh, reactions about uh, this particular topic. I learned how powerful technology is and how we can make use of this power as an agent of change. Take note that um, in sociology, uh, technology is one of the agents of change. Maliban doon sa population, di ba? marami yung apat na factors like institutions and then environment. Okay. Take note that sabi nga in one click of our uh, post or just a simple post in the social media, it can create ripples, it can create a change. And um, thank you for all the input. Parang nakita ko dito yung alignment no from the of thoughts and input from the sharing of uh, Sir John Cornwell and of course uh, the input com coming from Kuya Zero Magalyon and Father Cel Reyes of the Society of Jesus. Aligned talaga siya masyado no is para isang linya lang ng thoughts, iba-ibang terminologies lang. And um I learned many big things today like big words today like Engage, security, participate, responsible freedom vis-a-vis -vis accountability, and then connectivity. Um, as I was listening to our speakers, I found myself more challenged so, on how we can translate all these big words into something concrete, more concrete. How it can be... Um, it can be a baby step or perhaps into something bigger than ourselves, like a movement of change. I am asking myself, where do we begin from here, given the present social state of our society, of our country? Where, where can we start optimizing the gift of technology so that the quality of our lives as Filipinos and Bicolanos can be improved? In my daily grind as a formator in the Atene de Naga, being the program director and at the same time the uh, senior formators in the college signation formation program and the national service training program, I am interacting with Gen Zs and the millennials or even the uh, X-men, sabi nila, the XY generation. Um, the more that I realize that I have a big role to play, I can be an influencer and I can make use of this uh, so that I can help um, in the process of change. The big words I learned today are also the same words that I use to facilitate knowledge and learning in our virtual classroom. When I talk about poverty and corruption, I engage them in a conversation where they can speak their minds. We can exercise our freedom. We can exercise our democratic process. And at the same time, be free to analyze and examine uh, what is happening. I ask them to participate in meaningful activities that allow creativity of expression and productivity to flourish in whatever platform available there is, or even in the smallest way possible. The invitation of John Cornwell to be a digital citizen or to develop that digital citizenship is also the responsible freedom that Father Cell is encouraging us to practice in our day-to-day -day lives, to be more prayerful before clicking, before posting in the social media. We are all related to one another. We are all connected to one another. We are all in this together. Finally, about connectivity. This is our line of defense. This is where we draw the line also. This is where we create and build our network. It can be a network of friends or allies, or it can also be a network of enemies. This is where we also create influence and mobilize a movement, a movement that can change you, that can change the Philippine society and can change the world. Binabalikan ko ng konti yung ano eh, yung history. I remember Martin Luther King when he started the movement, no, the Protestant movement. Sabi nga niya, ang ginawa niya, he just nailed, it started, he nailed a, po, a polemical document in the church in Wittenberg. Pero it's tantamount to posting also uh, our ideas, picture or whatever in the social media. And it started a movement. 
that's where techno technology comes in, the power, the strength of technology. That's where we can influence other, other people. And connectivity transcends in this digital world that we live in today. If this is a double edged sword, like what Father Villarin said, as shared by Father Sell, then what will we choose to do? What will we do? Ano bang gagawin natin? So I think ano, um, pag-isipan nating mabuti, no? discernment is a very important element uh, so that we can create a change. Um, I am really uh, interested more no? how we can make use of this technological development so that we can create a change and, when, uh, and eventually create an improvement in the quality of lives of our countrymen of our lives as Filipinos and Bicolanos. Let me end with uh, the famous quote of Martin Luther King. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. Paul. All right. Thank you so much for that, Mom Jude, for sharing. And indeed, you're right. Um, Laderize talaga yung shinir ng ating three speakers from the awareness, from tools, and even uh, about discerning, especially as we immerse in this kind of platform. And you're right, it's really a powerful tool because it can really form the minds of the citizens, specifically digital citizens, and it can create a movement. Okay, thank you so much for that, Ma'am Judy, for sharing your insights. All right, sige. We'll proceed with the next reactor. Okay, so we're now going to Sir Dave's El Tonga. He is the, re the director of the University Student Development Services at Bicol University. Hi, Sir Dave. Thanks for joining us. It's your turn. Pave the way. Thank you, Teen. Diyos maray na hapon po sa gabos from Bicol University and uh, to the more than a thousand viewers in Facebook Live. To say that I learned something this afternoon is a great uh, understatement, you know? So, first of all, I would like to congratulate the Office of Student Affairs of the Ateneo Dinaga University as well as the PAPSAS Region 5 for hosting this very timely and relevant webinar on digital safety and discernment, as well as our great appreciation to the resources speakers you know, for unselfishly sharing their knowledge, expertise, as well as insights on the topics at hand. On, on the first a topic on digital citizenship and digital footprint by Mr. Uh, Mr. John Stephen Cornwell. So I really learned a lot from you, Sir Cornwell. You know? I may not be a digital native like you. I am more of a digital immigrant. But what I've learned from you is that we have to find that sweet spot you know, to set the good balance between convenience and privacy. You know what I did? I, I did three things after after listening to the talk of Mr. Cornwell. First, I googled my name. I immediately typed my name using Google, and you know to to see whether my my privacy has been compromised. Second, what I did is to check the privacy setting of my Facebook account. Okay, and third, immediately I created an anonymous email account. You know for for. Uh, personal uh, correspondence. So thank you, Mr. Cornwell, for uh, sharing of your insights on that. Next, in on the topic of uh, safety and responsible use of ICT by engineer Zero Magalion. No, the first name may be Zero, but definitely not his knowledge on the intricacy of ICT. So I've I've learned from uh, engineer Magalion that you know before. Uh, we are familiar with smartphones and smart uh, watches, but now there are uh, many more smart wearables, no? like smart glasses, smart shoes, smart belts, and we have even smart socks. No? And having the smart wearables is not licensed. I'm so sorry for the term that I'm going to use. No? Wearing smart wearables is not a license for being stupid. We have to be very aware of the cyber security and cyber wellness as described by Engineer Magalion. 
and of course the package would not be uh, will not be complete without the the sharing of father cell radius ano, on discernment and uh, engaging uh, social media so discernment is beyond mere comprehension you know, or critical thinking it involves daily reflections you know, that guide us to have better judgment in our social media engagement so what caught my attention from father reyes is the principle of tantum quantum you no know? so this is very enlightening on my part so i i read about quantum tantum and i found in the internet this is the article from another jesuit no uh, si father john g sumpaiko okay according to him saint ignatius of loyola describes the discernment on how we use our god-given faculties towards our goals by employing an attitude of quantum quantum tantum okay we are to use them in so far as they lead us to our last end and read of them in so far as they hinder us in the pursuit of the end to which we are created so with that thank you very much Paul. thank you so much for that sir daves and habang nag-give pala ng tips yung speakers um more of ina-apply na ni sir dave so live habang nakikinig so thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and insights affirming the what was being shared by our speakers okay so on the next part from educators we will now proceed to the students so we'll proceed to uh, we have uh, miss pauline jean de barcia she's the president of media study society of ateneo de naga university hi pauline um hello uh, this is pauline from ateneo de naga university Apologies if I'm wearing a mask. I'm in quarantine, po, but I do hope I'm still audible. So, all right. Um, if I'm wearing a uh, uh, all right. So, part of our ever-changing world are the rise of new technologies and online spaces. When the coronavirus entered our borders, a lot of our day-to-day -day activities and transactions shifted online. Thus, resulted to the rise of people subscribing to different forms of information communication technologies. A lot of people purchased. And they'll still are continuously purchasing digital devices like the hardware ranging from personal computers, tablets, and even wearable ones like the smartwatches, as discussed by Engineer Magalian a while ago. While these things possess advantages like network and connection, we have to note how forms of exploitation are also present in these aspects. Viruses can now be generated in seconds. We are now under threat of hackers, phishing, malwares, and spywares almost every day in our lives. On the other hand, in online social platforms, which we allow ourselves to have an extended version of ourselves, it's sad how polarization and exploitation exist as well. First, on the economic aspect, our data from various forms of engagements, according to Sir John Cornwall, are maximized by corporations to take advantage over us. These are manifested on repetitive advertisements we see in our social media feeds urging us to buy on online stores like Shopee or Lazada, even though those products aren't really necessary. But because it reinforces our interest, we allow companies to capitalize on people's addiction to retail therapy. Advertisers utilize different techniques already. How they pick color palette, for example, in creating posters, and with them having another access to our interest, we tend to be on the losing end. Second, on political aspects. I remember the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which claimed that Facebook sold its users' data to a third-party entity, which paved the way for Trump to win the U.S. elections back then, as some people claimed it. In the Philippines, a lot of farm trolls and fake accounts are taking over social media sites to spread misinformation. That is how internet are weaponized for self vested interest. Ultimately, in a personal level, which affects our thought processes and behavior, this is where the discussion of Father Salerino Reyes becomes relevant. That, that what we consume has the tendency to shape our identity. It allows anxiety to thrive. This shows how powerful technology and media are. To counter all these harms, we have to be an active user of technology and responsible consumer of media. Our fight, this pandemic now comes into folds, online and offline. We have to go beyond the surface level of the online sphere. We have to understand how our data are being processed, how algorithm works, and how, as a whole, the system operates. And we shouldn't be passive. We have to constantly countercheck information that are being presented, weigh the consequences of what our clicks would do, 
and keep in constant track of our digital footprints. Moreover, we have to take note of the implications of spirituality to discern, to value wisdom, and to understand. And that may seem a lot of work, given that all the, the given the fire hose of information out there. But at the end of the day, it is how we hinder ourselves from long-term repercussions that may come in the future. This is why, at its core, media technology literacy is important, and we have to make it accessible, such as this event, particularly to those who are most vulnerable. It is a collective fight, and we should champion this collectively. Thank you all to all the speakers and the organizing committee behind this event for making media ac education accessible. Um, be a responsible digital citizen, discern, and embody kindness, both online and offline. Let us all leave a trail that is worthy to be remembered. Thank you, Paul. All right. Thank you so much, Pauline. And indeed, you're right. When the pandemic strike us, a lot of us really um, being more dependent to social media. And the more that we have to really be aware of what we are dealing with. That's why um, you highlighted as well on the last part about really discerning of what we are really posting. And I, it, I, it came to me, this book coming from Dr. Egerich, before you hit send. And he has four points in there. Every time that we are in social media, it has something to do with discernment. Um, you have to ask four questions about yourself before posting. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? And lastly, the new one, is it clear? Ayan, thank you so much for that, Pulin. Ayan, for sharing, of course, as well, your insights and thoughts. Okay, so we'll proceed to another reactor. So she is our friend from... Dr. Emilio B. Espinosa, Sr., Memorial State College of Agriculture and Technology in Masbate. She is Ms. Danica P. Rubia, the Internal Vice Chairperson of the Supreme Student Council. Hello, Danica. It's your turn. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Po? Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. So I am sorry for the background there. It is my it might uh, it might be somewhat dark, but anyways, um good afternoon po and I am um I wanted to uh have this opportunity to thank uh the Ateneo um Dinaga University for having this kind of um activity, this webinar because it is it is really engaging and it is um, very informative to every one of us, especially that we are talking about the um, media thing. So um, those um, talk, talk from the speakers was really her speaking and I don't wanna um, ask more questions about it because um, they really uh, gave us the thought, the complete thought of um, being aware and how we should engage to uh, social media platforms and the different um, systems or systems that was um, being handled by it or we are engaging into it. So um, I would just like to share my thoughts or my insights generally. So it is very, I mean, we are really, um, we, we are really informed about how social media is um, affecting our lives as individuals, as users. So there are lots of consequences, yet there are also um, positive feedbacks that we can get out from the um, means or ways that we are engaging into, into the social media platforms and other um, technology. Um, those things that we are dealing with are actually um, helpful, especially nowadays that we are um, living in this kind of new normal setup. So um, there are lots of ways that we can get into, especially now that we are having these online classes, um, work at home. So social media and technology is really the best um, way that we can go into in order for us to um, strive with this uh, pandemic. So it is true that um, as what um, Sir John Cornwell said that or stated that uh, we should be very particular with what we are posting on social media or what we are sharing. 
think before you speak. So not everything that we are uh, posting in the social media. So we might think it is um somewhat like fun or cute thing having either um zero. So, but uh we uh without knowing na um malaki na pala yung impact nito sa uh, mental health natin as well as our physical health. So we might end up regretting some things that we are posting online because um, yun nga, hindi tayo nagiging aware kung ano yung pinupost natin or kung ano ba yung sinishare natin na hindi na pala reliable yung sources. So we're just speaking there and there tapos posting there and, um, in any social media platform. So hindi tayo nagiging aware kasi we're enjoying the moment, right? So we're on the vacation so we just wanted to post it all time just to share it with our friends without um, knowing na um, yung iba pala, negative na yung ano, diba? So, yeah, so, um, and also, sabi nga, um, we have to um, disconnect in order to reconnect. Kasi sabi nga ni Father, um, we, we need to find ways or we need to find some places that we can relax, not just um, by wasting our, uh, all of our time inside the social media. Kasi, Masada na tayong occupied ng social media. So, um, sometimes gusto na lang natin na consume yung time natin na um, with our friends there, di ba? Zoom meetings or uh, video video calls or video chat. So, um, we, do, we need to find some place or some time to find ourselves relaxed and um, out of the social media platforms or any other uh, technology is matter para uh, uh, makain ng ayod kasi nga um, nap- napaka-toxic na rin ng social media. So, ayun, we, we must be very, very careful of posting everything online. And then, though, um, we we heard so many times how helpful uh, the social media is, pati na rin yung mga gadgets na ginagamit natin ngayon. But sometimes, we needed to hear it once more. So, ayun nga, sabi nga ni, anong mga speakers natin, so, it's a speaker zero na um, yung mga gadgets na ginagamit natin are very applicable. Applicable in so many ways, and it is easy. Um, tawag nito, um, kumbaga, nagiging outlet sa ng mga um, ginagawa natin ngayon. So, and uh, with that, kailangan pa din natin naging careful. So, yung mga securities natin. Um, so, in my, on my personal um, experience din, so every time that I am making um, an account, so whatever account it is in the social media, so I make sure and I see to it na secure siya, basta-basta na ano yung um, password and Para din for the safety kasi ang dami na ng mga victims nowadays na, di ba, ng mga, na may mga posters and then meron ding mga nahahack yung account. So, ang dami-dami talagang toxic na nangyayari inside the social media world. So, we must be very, very careful and ayun nga, paulit-ulit natin na napapakinggan yung mga warnings, yung mga um, advices that we should put into our minds for us to be safe and kasi akala natin dahil na yung iba na hindi na visible enough di ba? Akala nila um, they're enjoying a lot of time in the social media without um, kumbaga hindi sila aware nga na maraming pwedeng mangyari at naging effective to sa kanila yung mga negative impact na uh, that can that uh, can either hurt them Diba, emotionally or mentally or physically kasi ang dami din impact talaga ng, ng uh, na, na, na itutulat ng social media. So, <laughs> I don't actually know how to end this because I have a lot of things to say pero um, I'm just really thankful for um, being with this kind of activity and I hope that to all our viewers who and the uh, online or in the live session are getting a lot of uh, learning from our speakers. So thank you po and once again, God bless. I am Dani Karagipo from uh, Dr. Emilio Bispinoza Senior Memorial State College of Agriculture and Technology.
technology from the province of mathematics. Thank you po. Thank you so much for that wonderful insights, Danica. And you're right, what you're posting can be used against you. So imagine if you posted a lot. So of course, to really practice digital citizenship in a right way. And you're right, social media is good, pero kapag napapasobra, nakakasama talaga. That's why from time to time, according to one of our speakers, we have to really disconnect in order to reconnect. Thank you so much for that. Hello. All right. Miss Lovely, it's your turn. Hello po. Um, sorry po na wala po connection. It's okay. Um, 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 first of all, po, I, uh, I, just, I want to uh, apologize because I'm, uh, I'm wearing a face mask. Uh, I got vaccinated yesterday and I'm protecting myself as well as the people that surround me here. Uh, para po mabawasan po ang pag-spread po. And, ano po. Um, uh, hello po, good afternoon. I'm Lovin Nicole Sandoval from uh, Veritas College of Revisin. I am the secretary of our student council. And um, today, uh, this afternoon po, I would like to thank all the speakers um, from the first speaker uh, until the last speaker. Um, I really learned a lot po. And since po ako po yung uh, uh, narinig ko naman po lahat ng mga insights nyo as well as your thoughts and uh, almost uh, ma uh, halos same lang naman po. And uh, gusto ko po talaga mag thank you because I learned a lot today, and ju just like what our, us, uh, just like what uh, one of the speakers said, uh, we need to engage positively, critically, and competently with internet. And ako po uh, bilang sa uh, sa nagagamit mong po sa social media, I can um, I cannot definitely say that I am posting uh, something that is very educational or on mga info post ko po is something related, but. After this uh, webinar, I learned a lot that not everything should be posted in social media. Kay, uh, sometimes po, because of our posting, uh, naka-apekto na po siya sa ato. Pero as, uh, I, I, I just want to share something po, sir. Because one of my friend, uh, uh, siguro po uh, kadaghanan po sa ato is naka-receive po sa ato na mga link. Uh, am I audible po, ma'am? Yung mga link po ba ganyan, just one and some makapasa po siya or sabi po nara yung mga ang mga Facebook account da po is uh, pwede po daw ma-access. So I have a question po sana ma'am kasi one of my friend one of my friend experienced that and uh, gusto ko po sana ha po dun, if uh, does changing your password is okay or okay na po ba yun or do we have to do something na mas ano pa po para po may, para po di na po ma-access ang account me even masipo po na pindot lang po ito na link accidentally lang po all right thank you so much for that lovely and she raised a question so i'll be inviting any of our speakers who would love to answer or respond to her question yeah, so I maybe okay sir john yeah um Changing a password is one step, um, let's say, to, to um, improve your security on social media. But the thing is, password is just one element when you log in. Remember, when you, when you log in, you still have your email address, right? And did you encounter already when you, uh, let's say, uh, mistyped your passwords? So there's an option uh, that you can click the forgot password. So let's say uh, even though you you wanna uh, you you change that password already, and then you made sure that that's a really different password. You haven't used that password in other websites. Maybe uh, your email is also uh, compromised. So maybe a hacker can just click the forget password and then can just change the password, right? So, um, siguro one of the um, recent technologies that most websites actually has already um, is to enable your OTP or your one-time authentication. Um, for Facebook, de ba merong um, one-time authentication within the app that whenever um, whenever you log in um, to a different device. Um, kumbaga, kailangan ma-open muna yung Facebook app uh, on your other device na nakalog in para makita mo yung operator. 
or meron ding other option like pwede siyang send to your SMS number. So um, to answer your question directly, hindi enough yung sa password. Uh, but again, dun sa password, just also make sure na hindi pabalik-balik yung password na yun. Kasi even though uh, you change that password, tapos may kapareho siyang iba, tapos compromised yung ibang password, then there might be a, a problem there in the future. Um, siguro just an additional tip, uh, use password managers. There are safe password managers available naman din. Even, even yung mismong Google encrypted naman siya. Um, minsan, kung nag-login ka or nag-sign up ka, nag- uh nag nagsasuggest si Google uh password manager ng um password na kumbaga random letters, characters and numbers. You can use that. I personally um shift to that kasi mas safe 'yon kasi it's it's very random. It's almost impossible to to ano to guess that. So, yeah. Uh those I think are the like actions that you can implement further. Yes po. Thank you so much po, sir. I will share that information to my friend po. Um, and uh, also po, gusto ko po, uh, I, I just want to say that um, yung sinabi po ni Father Celino is, it's very accurate that before, uh, bago po kita, or before we post something, we should, uh, we should know how, uh, we should know what to post and social media kasi nga po sabi nga po kanina ni Ma'am Ruby uh, social media is sometimes toxic and there are some pe- oh, there are some uh, toxic people na kumbaga inaabangan lang yung mga post natin to say something to us na po so tama po yeto and before we uh, say something uh, on social media let's just say if we uh, pag may nakita po kita na picture or something uh, dapat po uh, we should limit our words or we should limit our comments because that comment of us uh, that com- comment of yours will be very powerful it may uh, it may make or destroy that person kaya dapat po uh, we need to use our uh, conscience or what sabi nga po ni, uh, ni father silino as the voice of god for us to know or for us to know what to do or to do good and avoid evil pa. So, thank you so much po sa, ter- uh, sa learning po na yun after yun. Thank you so much po sa informations that I have gathered. Thank you so much po. God bless. God bless, lovely. And thank you so much for raising a question and also affirming to really take a pause coming from the discussion about discernment. Okay, so we're done with lovely, with all the reactors. Now, since we're done with the educators, na reaction, students will now proceed to our um, viewers. So they have some questions in here. So let me just scroll it up. So we have the first question. So from Miss Precious Nina Apuya. Sabi niya, thank you po for your wonderful talk. I would just like to ask po about online password keepers. Example, Google Autosave, Autofill. Is this recommended? How can we be assured that our passwords are safe? And can there be legal claims for damages if there has been a security breach while using their services? Anyone can answer according here. So who would love to answer? Maybe we have Sir Zero. Yeah, I think you need to check the terms of uh, engagement with uh, Google to see if they are uh, if there's certain uh, liability on their part. Pero I think it's more of use at your own risk ang usual na ano na term of ano engagement with this type of companies. All right. Thank you so much for that um Sir Zero. Now we have the second question in here and this is addressed particularly for Mr. Cornwell. So, sa ang uh, tanong, are private Twitter accounts safe to post in and from unwanted eyes po? Are employers able to look at its posts as well? Thank you po for Mr. Magalian. Okay, so, kay Mr. Cornwell na muna kasi may part two for Mr. Uh, Sir Zero naman. So, Sir, Cor- Sir, Sir John? Yeah, um, siguro, ano lang, to, to check it more lang, to, be, to verify it. Siguro um, you need to ask again and check kung uh, is your profile really private. Kasi there are profiles sometimes that you say na it's private kasi um, sinet mo yung privacy settings ng isang particular tweet. 
but you didn't know na your profile is actually, your other tweets are actually visible to others. And there are also cases na um, like you, you, you lock your profile, like um, you, you, you not, you don't, ano, you don't turn on the visibility ng profile mo whenever people na hindi nagpa-follow sa'yo, um, they can't see your tweets. So you need to check that. Kasi minsan din, Siguro the best way that you can implement is sige, pwedeng i ano mo siya, i, i- hide mo yung mga um uh, kumbaga i lock mo yung hindi naman lock. Um kumbaga i-, i turn on mo yung privacy ng profile mo um na hindi siya visible sa kahit kanino man. Maybe you can choose that. Tapos uh see to it also na hindi big sabihin na nag-follow na sila makakita na agad sila. Parang meron pang approval from your part. There there is an option to that na you will allow that ser- for certain um, Twitter user to to, to uh, go through your your tweets and um, siguro ano na lang din um, balit na lang din dun sa point na make sure that your login details are um, secured kasi even though na you ano you turn on your privacy settings pero kung meron nga lang madaling makakahack at makakapasok sa account mo so that's almost useless kasi when they kung makaka-access na sila so they can change the privacy settings. And yeah, um pwede pa rin siyang makita syempre ng employer mo kahit naman hindi yung mga tweets mo eh. Kahit naman kahit yung bio mo pwede pwedeng makita. Yung name mo sa Twitter pwede siyang makita. Sinabi ko kanina na um you should try, you should try siguro Google yourself like what Sir Dave's did. Um try Googling yourself and then uh, makikita mo doon siguro mostly yung mga social media accounts that are related to you. So kahit uh, unable kumbaga naka-close yung profile mo to uh, random visitors, makikita pa rin na meron kang Twitter account, yung bio mo nakikita pa rin. So need to be ano um careful with that also. Yep, okay. Thank you so much for that, sir. Okay, so we'll proceed to the second question for Sir Zero. What antivirus programs, the free ones, can you recommend? Actually, and daming ano free antivirus in the net, no. You can go with Avas, Kaspersky, Bitdefender. And dami nilang available. Uh, you just need to download them. Kaya lang, uh, just a note, a note, no. Uh, limitado yung protection with the uh, free antivirus compared to actually acquiring or buying an actual subscription for an antivirus. So, kung wala talaga, walang wala, go for those na full feature tapos walang bayad. Like, uh, the likes of like Komodo, for example, is a good antivirus. Pero kung gusto mo yung may bayad, go for Malwarebytes, Sophos, uh, Avast. Those are good ones. All right, thank you so much for that, Sir Zero. Okay, a while ago, one of our reactors actually emphasized a lot about discernment. So she's Miss Pauline from the Media Studies. But currently, um, she's no longer here in the Zoom. Maybe some connection problem. So I would like to ask Father Cell if ever can you react to the reaction of Miss Pauline Jean Garcia? Okay, nandito pa pala si Pauline. Can you repeat the question, please? All right. A while ago, Miss Pauline have shared a lot about the discernment of father. And huh? um, can you react to what she have reacted a while ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was about to ask what, what exactly, uh, Pauline, I'm sorry, but can you repeat that section on discernment? Ayan. Um, hello po. What oh. I said while ago regarding discernment is that it is important not just uh, when dealing with people physically but also in the internet level. In where we communicate with other people, it's important to like try to understand and be empathetic towards other people. So, yun po, na dapat we have to be kind as well in dealing or in communicating with other people online. Yeah, I, I would like to affirm that. In fact, um, that is one of the, uh, what you call the, the acronym that was used for the social media protocol by the Philippine province of the Society of Jesus. Yung, one of them is kind. Okay? But uh, no, I, I, I like to use the, the, well, the golden rule. Do to others what you want them to do to you. 
Okay? So if you are trying to be kind to others, uh, ano, at least that is what, what you want them to do to you. Of course, not everyone will do that. Okay? And there might still be other people who might not be responding that way. But just pushing on that, uh, I, I was struck with, Father, uh, with Sir John uh, Cornwell, he mentioned, uh, uh, don't respond uh, right away when you are somehow angry, emotional, uh, especially if you're angry or hurt or scared. Okay? Uh, because if you do that, it's something like this. From a spiritual point of view, actually it's in the principles of discernment. It's like uh, it's a knee-jerk reaction. And you can say many things. when You, you, you can curse, you can, uh, and you will regret it later. Okay? So just be aware that this is how I felt that this person or this uh, whoever it is communicated to me this message. But wait. No. Uh, wait for a while to respond until you somehow calm down. Okay. Uh, sometimes the response need not to be said now immediately. Okay. Uh, sometimes the response need to be uh, a little bit later when you are calmer, when you are at peace, rather than doing it now. So I I think that's a very good advice especially in the internet where you know uh, at the speed of light you the, your response is easily communicated to the other person and sometimes it's seen by many other people especially your friends if it's facebook or instagram okay uh, so understanding is important uh, also uh, to empathize is important because that's one of the power of the spirit of the soul. Okay. Uh, and, it, and it's also, uh, it's where we draw our energy. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that affirmation, Father Cell. Okay. Um, namit ba? Okay, sige. Thank you so much, Father Cell. So this is really um, informative, informative conversation that we have for this webinar. So actually, that concludes our open forum. So I would like to thank you, speakers, Mr. Cornwell, Engineer Magalion, and Father Cel Reyes, and to our reactors and those who participated in the open forum. So let, uh, let me conclude this by personally also sharing, because I also learned a lot from this webinar. So I'll just summarize it into one thought. I said, there are a lot of things playing on my mind while listening. And indeed, being in the digital age is a gift. And this gift that we have should be used as a means to inspire solidarity, promote authenticity, instill social justice, and create a space where humanity will continue to prosper in the digital world. Hence, this is one of our ways to leave positive digital footprints. And fortunately, we are seeing it already step by step. Kaya uh, maraming salamat sa ating speakers to re for sharing your expertise to our students. So this will be a great help to them. And also, let me share, some efforts are being made to promote responsible use of social media nowadays and other digital platforms. So, hindi na tayo lalayo on our Ignatian Committee. For example, we have our Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis, who adjusted to the platform of this time through bringing God in the Twitter world. Father James Martin SJ, who uses Instagram and even the trend right now, TikTok to reach out to the youth and guide souls in the digital world. And moreover, from what we learned to our three speakers, so this is addressed to our viewers, I have high hopes that this will not remain as only an awareness. So what we have learned today should be translated into action. And like what we usually hear, it is actually a saying na ititweak ko lang ng konti, kapag alam mo na ang katotohanan at alam mo na kung ano ang tamang gawin, kasalanan na ang pumikit at walang gawin. And this choice is now on us. Now on you, our dear viewers. Whether you will choose to ignore and let digital injustice take over, 
and let yourselves be oppressed by it? Or will you turn it into an advantage, just like what our speakers have shared, by being responsible and informed digital citizens? Okay, from the awareness about footprint, ICT, and about discernment. And lastly, let me share the words of Pope Francis. He said, May social media or our digital world will always be spaces that are rich in humanity. Just mabalos, and that officially ends our open forum. I hope that our dear viewers right now, I hope we're still there, also learned something from this webinar. So I, may I now give back the virtual floor to Daniel. Daniel, back to you. Thank you so much, Mam Tin. So um, I agree. And just like you, I also learned from this webinar the importance of being mindful and aware of the things we share online, the dark consequences of staying too much online. And I really appreciate how this webinar holistically addresses all the aspects of human identity of every individual who is watching right now by ending with a topic on discernment. Ultimately, I think to top it all off, I think it is important that we also practice compassion and most especially in the new normal. I, considering that there are still a lot of people who do not have access to digital spaces and the overwhelming amount of information that we are now receiving, sometimes the, hu the human individual cannot easily digest or be accustomed to the new environment. So therefore, compassion is necessary. If we want to collectively uplift ourselves and address the issues of digital, of the digital and virtual world. So as stated by Father Sal, I would just like to reiterate because I totally agree that we have to be reminded of the golden rule. So once again, thank you so much to Mamtin, to the reactors, and to the speakers, of course. At this point, may we now present the e-certificate of appreciation to show our gratitude for our resource speakers for their time and effort. Let me read the citations. And first, for Mr. Cornwell. The certificate reads, the Office of Student Affairs at Ateneo de Nagio University, in cooperation with the Philippine Association of Practitioners of Student Affairs and Services, or PAPSAS Region 5, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. John Stephen M. Cornwell in grateful recognition of his generosity as resource speaker in the webinar, Shields Up, Integrating Digital Safety and Discernment, held on September 10, 2021. Given this 10th day of September 2021 at the Ateneo de Naga University, City of Naga, Philippines. Signed by Ms. Janice Tresvalles, the Program Officer for Student Welfare, Safety and Ethics, Mr. Rodolfo Virtus Jr., Director of Student Affairs and POPSAS Region 5 President, Mam Janet Badong Badilla, Director of Office of Missions and Identity, and of course, Father Roberto Ezequiel Rivera of the Society of Jesus, the University President of the Ateneo de Nagi University. So thank you so much, Mr. Cornwell. So the same citation is also presented to Engineer Zero M. Magallion. Thank you thank so you. much, sir. Thank you, sir. And finally, th this e-certificate of appreciation is given to Father Celerino Ignacio M. Reyes of the Society of Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. So thank you, once again, thank you very much to our resource speakers. Now we have come to the end of the program. Before we for formally conclude this event, we would like to extend our gratitude to our guest speakers, reactors, and participants for joining this webinar. So from the organizer, the Office of Student Affairs, or OSA, thank you for your relentless help. So please don't forget to accomplish your evaluation forms through the link posted. The certificate of attendance will be issued after you will fill out the form. We now gather for the closing prayer. So may I invite everyone to be in the proper disposition as I start with, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. So dear Lord, as we end this occasion, we praise and thank you for giving us a successful webinar. We are very much blessed and we hope that you may keep blessing us as we go out of this meeting and apply what we have learned on digital safety and discernment. May the matters discussed here serve as a change agent that will move us forward to growth and better digital and virtual participation. Grant us that we will be fully aware that it is for the greater good and make us realize that all our actions and plans should be done for your, for your greater glory. 
This we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. And we hope that you enjoyed this webinar and actually gained insights and new learnings from it. So let us all be responsible and discerning digital citizens. Thank you to everyone for attending this webinar. Please stay safe. Ingat.